we're gonna start the stream off. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Amazing. Okay, I think. Yep, we are live. So, hello guys, what's up? Welcome to another stream. So today I'm joining in with Louis Levi and Portable Leash talking about the BBC Three documentary, which is um. Uh, Basically, this is about a documentary of how sex children are like sexualized and then uh, basically after this documentary 40 minutes in they just straight up attack bagas and uh, Basically head ties and lolis and I was like, okay, that's like completely unrelated to the previous one and If if you guys watch if you have watched the documentary There's basically a translator in there countering her every single argument and I was basically on board on that translator and it's just it is just so surreal and uh so uh I'm just gonna start off with uh Louis because he's the one who did that video uh basically just uh triggering this conversation so uh what are your thoughts on it um well, like I've already said about this, it's uh, unfortunately a matter of, um, like I said in the original video that I did on this, it's just, and like with all the videos that I've done on this exact same topic, it's someone that has found a soft target for them to hit, and based, like, I, I haven't actually seen the, the, the entire documentary yet because I haven't had the time to do so, mm -hmm. but... You know, the the predictions that I made, the assumptions that I made about it, all seem to be true. They all seem to be thought it would be. Yeah. Um, in that there is no differentiation of material, whether it is just casual, innocu innocuous uh, anime. It, anime is hentai, hentai visual novels, hentai, hentai anything. You know, it, it, there is no difference differentiation between anything and you can go ahead and, and quote her in that what, what is what is her remedy for all this what Bas does she think that should be done yeah basically she just want the entire thing to be bad just bad them all out just straight up i i didn't even expect that she's gonna say that but she just straight up say i want these things to be banned well okay then <laughs> just <laughs> this actually reminds yeah. me of the um un when they uh made little report and say that uh Japan should be censoring or banning these products as well well it even with um, the United Nations thing and there um uh, they God. weren't as forthright in upon anyone's free expression i'm just i'm just trying to say this i i just have an opinion I just think this is inappropriate. I, I'm not trying to ban anyone or anything. And in this case, with this woman, it seems as though that she doesn't even pretend as though that she's trying to be nuanced about it. Yeah, and uh, I would just want to also talk about um, a couple of issues that I have with that. Uh, the thing is, I find it's... Uh, I just, uh, when I watched that entire documentary, I was taking notes. And one of the fun yeah. things that I, one of the things that I find hilarious is that when they talk about sexualization of images, they show an image of love life. Just right. What? <laughs> like they're like freaking. Uh, well, I think they're like high schoolers or something like that around that age. But still. Yes. Yeah, and then uh, basically let's just talk about uh, before they were talk uh, talking about the mangas. So this documentary was focusing more on the sexualization of real children real children in japan uh real uh teenagers they're like basically go to this uh there's called jk cafe basically it's like a place for japanese high schools uh girls to go on and hang out with adults and just basically they uh, talk about sexual stuff occasionally they talk about sexual stuff uh mainly about women things uh a, a quote that i noted from that and then uh, there's an unusual age gap between the males and the females between that cafe. Uh, another thing that I want to note is that these customers are like 30s or 40s, but these girls are like uh, around 17 or 18 or 16. Just it when, when we're like, maybe you should talk on that perspective alone, on that part of the documentary alone. Maybe you guys, do you guys have any problems with it? Uh, I think part well, of the piece. I 
Well, I'll, I'll defer to my colleague here. <laughs> um, honestly, if they're okay, are they working in that, or is that just they're hanging out with older people? They're they're working in that. If you just watch that documentary, uh, uh wait. Oh, 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 yeah, I don't have a good memory. Um, okay, if they're working in that, then that's the age they're working there. That's normal. Mm -hmm. I mean, teenagers work in cafes and uh, restaurants and other things all the time, and adults go in to whatever it, it, to you know buy food and other things. That's normal. It, there's there's nothing inherently wrong with this. It it, it brings up the argue. Uh, I remember the uh, there's an argument to get like made cafes and things. Uh, mm -hmm. All the girls are forced to you know wear the outfit and be cute and you know uh, pander to the customers and things, and it's just. But that's their job. That's mm -hmm. their job. It, it it doesn't technically matter. It, it's it, I'm pretty sure there's a policy where if they're not allowed to actually assault them in the shop. God sakes. Yeah, yeah. Actually, they have a rule basically saying that they're not allowed to interact with uh, the adults right after they had this session in the cafe. That's basically a rule that they have in there. Oh, and well, then, uh, then what's the problem? That no, no, no one's getting hurt. The entire system is working perfectly, unless uh, unless someone is actually being assaulted or something. Then yeah, then that's an individual matter that needs to be settled. Uh, you know when it happens. Mm -hmm. But overall, I, I I I see the system's working fine. I, I don't see this as creepy or, or anything in some way. Um, and this is with the knowledge that, uh, uh I, okay. In Japan, it's more like you look at the high school years as kind of like the highlight of your life. You you make friends, you go to mm -hmm. clubs, yeah, you yeah. do you do that. That was the high point of your life before you become a salary man and you know you slave away for your country for the rest of your life, doing eighty hours a week and then you know killing yourself. So it's it's not wrong. It's not. It seems kind of normal to see you know people wanting to. Uh, go back and interact with people that age, and you know, wanting to sort of relive that. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, uh, let me jump off of that because I have something important to tie to that. So, once upon a time in American society, I can't speak to the United Kingdom where she's from, Stacy in this case, the person that did this documentary. But in the United States, once upon a time, there was no such thing as being a young adult, which we have today. So if you are a 20-something, you are considered a young adult. And even after college, there is this gap in, oh, it's time to assume the identity of being an adult. But way back when, in the United States, that was not a thing. And in the 50s, for sure, the same sort of notion of high school being the last few good years before you become an adult and you just step in you step into a factory and then you're an adult and you spend the next 40 50 years working and you get you know you marry someone at the age of 20 something and you start a family right there that was commonplace extremely commonplace in that era and one of the 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 top age group on listening of countless variations of 50s pop whether it's 50s rock 50s uh doo-wop 50s uh, uh ballads 50s uh rhythm and blues the the top uh age group that you will hear sung about for young women in terms of like being uh romantically engaged in is with 16 year olds bar mm -hmm. none they are the biggest age range of romantic like romantics and Today, we look back on that and say, well, how could you romanticize a 16-year-old, someone who's not even out of high school yet? But yeah, after they were out of high school, that was when they got married and it was all over with. Then they became, they became a family and they're an adult. But it's only now that we have this notion of young adults, even into their fucking 30s, that it seems inappropriate. And so my position on this is, that as it relates to people in the West, looking at other nations where they have any kind of perception of um, age range of, let's say, 16 to uh, 20 in terms of being uh, romantic material for women, 
or men, it doesn't matter. The reason why uh, we look at that so differently is because we have a different culture. We are different mm -hmm. significantly culturally than them. And I think that this is one, a byproduct of uh, the, uh, the surplus and uh, the, the prosperity that we've had in multiple generations in the United States, um, but also the infantilization of people that are young. In the United States, if you're not 25, even if you are 25, you know, you're treated like a child. And we see this in colleges. We see this all over the country. People treat kids that are of age, you know, 18 plus, as though they were fucking, you know, eight. It's Especially pathetic. when they're like uh, younger compared to the other people who are hanging out. Well, it, it, it's just a matter of like th this issue is very much a Western issue. And the fact that you have busybodies from the West now turning to other countries to lecture them on how they do anything is, in my opinion, unfortunately, just this glaring double standard that we have in the West, mm. where we have, a, a tr we have our own issues. And one of the big issues now is that every fucking college campus is a safe space. Mm -hmm. And that we we don't treat adults as adults, and that's a it's a very glaring issue. But at the same time, rather than address that, you have people like Stacy Dooley going halfway across the world to lecture people there, to lecture artists there about what they're allowed to express, you know, what they're allowed to draw, what they're allowed to do, you know, Morality. how Japanese men or women should spend their time or, and money. It's mm -hmm. It's it's a disgusting chauvinist attitude that I can't stand, but is very prevalent among the media in the West. This is a prevalent opinion that it is up to them to lecture the rest of the world about what they are allowed to do within their own country's borders. Yeah, as if they have the right to say that all of that. Um, okay. There's something very interesting in the intro in the introduction of that documentary. So, in Japan, they have this rule. Uh, Mombot mentioned this. Basically, they have this rule in Article 13 to say that you're not allowed to record things without permission. And these people, uh, with the BBC, they're recording things right. without permission. And they were like, in the, just in the introduction of that particular uh, video or that particular documentary. They're like being shouted at. The police actually told them to stop recording because it is actually against the law to record. So there's that very interesting event. And uh, so let's just gonna move on to other things. Uh, first, we got to the JK cafes. Now we get to the well, let's just say a a lot more. Just just showing the hypocrisy on the side of uh, this very hypocritical hypocritical side on this thing. So. The documentary, the Stacy Dooley, she basically said, I think I shared this on the DM as well. She said that it's not just culture. It's not just culture. Uh, it's abuse of children. You need to, uh, uh, we need to call it oh. out. And I was like, okay, that, that sounds familiar. That sounds incredibly freaking familiar. Like what you decided to use that argument against Japan, but you're not gonna use that argument to other people that have this different culture, but equally, if not even more damaging. So I was like, okay, like BBC, you <laughs> just try to get your shit done. Like what in the name of God is that? I think I, I know why gonna... they did that. Hmm? I, I, I actually think I know why they did that. It's because Japan is a first world country. They are producing products that are popular in the West that is slowly overtaking Western media that is, you know, has a draw to it that they can't control. They try to control through localization, through censorship, through yes. altering these products, and they cannot uh, contain it. They, it's getting more popular and more people are getting into it and are enjoying it, mm. even though they are censoring it and they are calling for less censorship. While the other is uh, the other cultures uh, let's not call it what it is they they're not 
they, they're ignoring it. They're ignoring it because it's directly in their country. It's a problem. It's racist to call them this. You know, they have no power. You know, the uh, progressive stack and shit, they're, you know, t uh, they're uh, above or too high or whatever the fuck it is. They institutional power, whereas Japan does in some way, who knows? And so Japan can be criticized and censored and Japan's evil. Japan. I, I, it's, it's, it's actually worse. It's, it's worse than what you're saying because they they actually like you're half right in that they don't agree with what Japan's doing. They obviously want to intervene there. That's the very clear sign of what they want to do. But it's not a matter of them being evil. It's mm -hmm. they see the Japanese as conservative, yes, but it's like they haven't been enlightened. They are the unenlightened, and mm. you know Western feminists are there to educate them on feminism ultimately intersectional feminism and they they are and you see this in japan and i've seen articles that have come out of japan where you see feminists in japan seeing the exact same shit that's happening in the west and you just want to scream like don't do it don't do it don't listen but um <laughs> they are trying to proselytize to them that is what they're trying to do they're trying to proselytize and get them to come on board and do what the western companies are doing and like i just tweeted out on twitter and Apple, you saw it that you know, with Mass Effect Andromeda, even the Yuri is shit. Yep. You know, they are incapable of producing decent products here in the United States, uh, or in, it's in Canada, but it's owned by an American company. And I, the, I think the, you should the, just the Western say the market rest in is not doing well. <laughs> the Western market right now is not doing well, and the Japanese market is booming at this current moment. And and the, I've seen numbers, and I, I have spoken to Peter Payne, who is the owner of JList. He's hmm. doing extremely well. I know several people that are work that that localize and um, are are hosts or platforms or whatever for visual novels. They're doing gangbusters right now. They're doing very well, and that is because this market is expanding all over the West. And, and so you know, I think you... another problem is here because, in the West. Uh, the the products in the West they're like sanitized beyond belief. That's also another issue. No, but the mar this market doesn't exist in uh, the market that Japan's filling doesn't exist in the West. You're not going to see yes. um, yes. Hyperdimension mm -hmm. Neptune in the West. You're not going to see Senan Kagura in the West. You're not going to see One Chamber. You're not going to see uh, visual novels, good visual novels in the West. They don't exist. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. All yeah, you yeah. have in their stead in the West when it comes to visual novels is narrative games, and they are all fucking garbage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. But, no, but even if you. T even if you just take visual novels out of the equation. Uh, how about the West? That simply cannot exist in the West because of, yes. well, how, how the culture how the culture is. I mean, if we if we go to an alternate dimension, how, can you see Senan Kagura being made in the West? No. No, it, it, no <laughs> not in a million years. I mean, it's never going to happen. Can you see Une Chambara come to the West? Oh, no, hell no. It, no, it will never happen. See, none of these games will ever exist if it wasn't for Japan, and they're trying to remove it from existence because, well, it's, it, it, well, I don't know, it's just immoral, whatever, I, I, I don't fucking know at this point. Yeah, I've seen more pre-orders of Nier Automata compared to Mass Effect Andromeda, because I've oh, heard, yeah, yeah <laughs> it, it, that is the weirdest thing, I've seen more people are like, yeah, I'm going to pre-order Mass Effect Andromeda, eh, Mass Effect Andromeda, Nier Automata, even here, right here, they're like, uh, what the hell well, is Mass Effect Steam. It's on Steam now. Oh, really? Oh, well, not. Yeah. Really? Yes. I did not check it. I, I thought it was like. It's, it's uh, not out yet, though. Oh, it's not out. Yeah, it's on Steam, no, it's but it's. On, it's you can uh, pre order it. Yeah, I can yeah, pre order yeah, it. You can pre order, but it's not out yet. Yeah. So, so there's that. Nova, like, there's FD New Voter. <laughs> you know what? You know what's not on Steam? Mass Effect Andromeda. Yes. Yes, please. What the hell is up with that, EA? Just stop with this oh, origin nonsense. They want just... to keep it to their own to their own platform, and that's what I mean. Is that like e with EA? You know, they are, they are their own worst enemy in that. And I, like, I don't hate Origin. Yeah, I, I do actually like Origin, but unfortunately, they I'm with like, you like Origin. Yeah, I actually, I, I don't think it's that bad. I, I don't mm -hmm. think oh, it's that God. bad. But, but, but my point is, is that they limit their distribution. They limit the distribution of their title and topic on the to Bioware, but. They need Mass Effect Andromeda to be not a good method to actually make sure it's successful. 
Yeah, adding on to that, um, going to as well as Senan Kagura as the versus. So, well, uh, oh yeah, Senan uh, Kagura as the yeah. versus is also on Steam, right? I have on Steam. Oh, okay. in uh, in March, I think. Yeah, yeah. That, that's fantastic. Like all these Western games, like they're coming in to the West. Like it's just, especially after the entire Fire Emblem Fates nonsense with the censorship and everything like that, just. I, I just want to see all these games to like even I'm not I'm not really just like a big fan of any of these games, but I just want to see people just enjoy these games completely without the sanitization, filterization of Absolutely. these with these moral busybodies. Like who who are you? Why what gives you the right to filter my games? And why would you filter why would you filter it? There's absolutely no reason. Like the censorship has gone so insane. Like even the most the, the smallest of things got removed for some stupid reason. Like I still have no idea why. Oh, it's removed because it's it, it's removed. It's removed because it's immoral. It, it's not, it's too Japanese. It's not Western <laughs> enough. It's not, it, it's a whole variety of dumb reasons where you, you can just go down the list. It, uh, uh, you know, vagina bones? Nah, that doesn't exist. Only men have those. <laughs> women, I mean, women don't even have bones. I mean, they, they just, it, God, it, it's, it's these things. Trying to make Japanese games unappealing. That's yes. honestly what I think it is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It would be just because if, if you censor Japanese games, if you make it so nobody wants it, they will say, "Oh, there's no market for it, so let's not bring any over. Let's focus on the normal fag mainstream shit that everybody likes." Yeah. <sighs> oh, you know that. Speaking of which, I saw you, Appa. You tweeted a thing of um, fucking Ashley Birch's character from Life is Strange earlier. Yeah. Can't believe you're retweeting. Yeah, fuck that game. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. That's another that shit. shit yeah, that, that's that's a game that I used to like. How oh, do you God. used to like it? It was garbage. <laughs> yeah, I used to like that game because well, I was I mean, too it young. Won more awards I was than too young. any game ever made, so it's got to be somewhat good, right? But, okay, I used to like that game. When I was like, I was 17, <laughs> I was young, I have... <laughs> <laughs> it only came out like what two years ago yeah uh, well like, you have no idea how my mind like shifts from that like i tested my political my political compass i like tested it it was like far to the left and then i tested it now it was like all the way to the center like that's yeah, how yeah, I, that's I how drastic no, I, my opinions no, change I, I don't know how you can like it senan kagura burst came out in the west in 2013 and that's a much better I, game i know game. i know i know i know i know i understand I mean, you got better yuri in that than in fucking life is strange uh, like, I, I guess a 3ds game to the person in the chat it's chloe yeah that's it's chloe sweet. chloe voice. although oh, i love I, I love to quote her i absolutely love to quote oh, her dude, that one strict. no no one quote from her is amazing like I, I I always quote her in my entire video. Like I gotta blame somebody, otherwise it's all my fault. Fuck that. Like that's that's the epitome of her entire character and yeah. social justice warriors in general. That is a quote that I am going to use because <laughs> always because it just describes her so much. <laughs> I remember um, my buddy uh, Match and I we actually talked about that game in a few videos way back when, and uh, it was when I was going on a tear just ripping on. Um, uh, or riffing on uh, narrative games here in the West, and mm -hmm. one of the scenes in that in that is, uh, when Max uh, takes the pistol from um, uh, either was it was Frank or it was uh, Chloe's stepfather, but she mm -hmm. takes the gun and shoots, and it ricochets and it hits Chloe, and uh. she, she goes, <laughs> "Stupid gun!" And my what? friend couldn't go over it. You thought it was. No, I, I, I see no, no, that scene was, was hilarious. So, it's such a fucking cringy ass game. Um, it did actually. I will say that it, it's not an irredeemably bad game. Oh, um, it is. Just, it just, is. just, just look at the Metacritic score. Like it's positive all around. And I was oh, like, oh, 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 oh god, know, Metacritic is shit. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. It's like Senan Kagura is like what, like sixty five? While God Home's like what ninety? Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Off. No, no, no. Oh, the, oh, user. The, the user. The user. The user. I'm not than go uh, than fucking Senan Kagura. Nah, I, I don't fucking believe it. I, I'm not talking about the critics. I'm talking about the user. The user right. rating 
for Seren Kagura. It, it, it's like 90, it's like 90 all over again. God Home is like 60. Well deserved. Well deserved. Like Life God... is Strange is actually pretty high on Steam, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Life and is Strange. I, is... I think God. that. I think that people really view that game from some seriously rose tinted glasses because um it is it is not a very good game. It is not well voice acted. It it is poorly oh, paced it with a bad isn't. script, et cetera, et cetera. But it, it it like literally, and I mean this, uh, I cannot think of a, another game in recent times other than maybe like Bioshock or Grand Theft Auto V that has won more awards than Life is Strange. It was I, showered I, I, in awards yeah. for years. Even, even back then, even back then, I, I, even back then when I liked the game, I didn't think that this game would win a work. I don't think this game deserve it. Yeah, I, I like it. Okay, but it's, it's not, it's not the best game ever. Okay, I did declare it the right. best game of 2015 because. But the thing it's, is, oh, is that God. one of the reasons why thought it was the best game. God. <laughs> How could you, that? Alpha? You, you, yeah, yeah, I was. You, Alpha, you actually thought it was a good game. Yeah, I, again, 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 I was, I was, I was young, I was stupid, I'm 19 now, so it's the 17 year old me just being fucking stupid. Uh, okay, <laughs> what was my best game 2015? I think it was like, what, Monster Girl Quest? I, it was like, what, the third chapter has been, like, released, and I was like, oh, this is fucking awesome, because it, the characters were actually likable, the music was good, the RPG elements were well done, I actually liked it, it was, this is great, it, yeah, there was, it was hentai. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it had everything you want, <laughs> but it's like, oh, oh, life is strange. Best game, twenty fifteen. The the only good thing that ever came out of it was um, uh, was the jokes and everything yes. and the memes from it. That's yes. the only good thing that ever came out of that. Yeah, the memes, the memes are pretty fucking funny. They're not as good as it's going back to. Uh, unfortunately, with fucking uh, Mass Effect, bro, the memes are nonstop when it comes Wait, to Mass, Ma Effect Mass Effect drama. Wait, they are nonstop. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, fucking uh, yeah. fucking Shrek thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I love it's that. Nonstop, bro. Every single time they release a trailer, there is just a flood in my feed of different memes about the trailer. Every like I've seen at least five or six um since they put out the last trailer, making fun of it just relentlessly. And it's just like like I, I, I really don't think that they're uh, going to have a good effect on, you know, the market. I think that, like, it, it makes me curious now. Like, I, I recorded a commentary that I haven't had the time to put up where I just do a, a rant about how much I can't stand Bioware. But uh, mm -hmm. I, one of the things I say in that is that after watching the trailers, despite once being a massive fan of Bioware, that I have no inclination to actually play the game. But now it's like I've started to reconsider where it's like this game looks so bad, so fucking bad it, it, you that have I might it. just buy it just to like maybe try to stream it or something just to <laughs> mock it. Thrash it, oh, yeah. It is, it, it is like watching a zombie rise from the grave and you're like, <laughs> and, you, and you're like decorating it in fucking like uh, – like you're, you're like you're – like you're putting shaving cream on the top of its head. Like you're just – Mocking it. For <laughs> oh its God! Fucking state. It... Well, uh, the thing is, when I want to get a uh, Mass Effect, I was looking forward for the squad mates. I was just looking for okay, maybe there. Oh, okay, God. I was okay. Uh -huh. uh, maybe there are. Maybe there are a couple of squad mates that I like. Then I look at the roster, and I was like, okay, not not buying it. I'm sorry, the squad mates look terrible. And if I want to play as a female, like I could, who the hell would I want a romance in there? Like I, I can't. Like the, the right. characters are too. It, it, they like came out of someone's ass. I I just I'm yeah, sorry every, I can't. Yeah, every character is shit. Every character is. Every shit. character is shit. Like even the male ones. Like okay, okay, maybe yeah. in Bioware. Did you see that manlet meme that uh, Ian Miles Chong? Oh yeah, I saw that. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, man, I saw that. Yeah, he's the manlet. It's so fucking funny. Yeah. He has like this. Oh, he has like this dorp face and like oh, just like. It, it's and he's so, like super uh, shrimpy. He's like super uh, short. And yeah, shit. Like super short. I, yeah, I can't. Uh, I actually looked at that, and it, it was like the original Mass Effect. Is like he actually looks, you know, big and tougher than this one. He's tiny. He's like he, he looks like yeah. anyone can just beat him. Around. A beta, a beta. <laughs> <laughs> he looks. Of course, he's a beta. God, <laughs> fuck. He looks so. He, he can't threaten anybody. God, people will laugh. <laughs> 
he really he like the peach fuzz on his face and shit like it just it's not working i like the default face is for the man and uh the female they look terrible the female looks fuck ugly like shrek i mean it, it's not <laughs> that it's not that big of an exaggeration and uh, the man I, he just looks like a pussy you know and it's like know, this I, is this is supposed to be like an intergalactic fucking hero I, yeah. I think somebody said like the female has like downs or something like that or <laughs> <laughs> She looks so <laughs> fucking retarded. Oh my god! Like <laughs> down, she's really? born with some deformity because she's like her oh, eyes really. just like she looks somewhat like an alien. And this is from yes. somebody who's like he looks at like anime stuff and is like, oh, but that's not realistic. Yeah, it's right. more fucking realistic than this bitch. Right. No, no, and they it's made more they made the Asari at. ugly. <laughs> they made the Asari ugly. It's okay, just like you, you why? Can't, yeah, you can't screw up an Asari, the most beautiful creature in the entire galaxy. They screwed it up. This. Right there. Right. I, I can't I can't fucking believe it they did it. Oh man, I gotta I gotta yeah, find well, that fucking meme from earlier. <laughs> Go, well, I gotta somebody, find that. Yeah. Well that's somebody's fetish, isn't it? Like they, they like ugly women. <laughs> that's no, gotta oh, be yeah. someone's fetish. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> But I ain't gonna. I I don't want to fuck the like attractive girls. I'm just going after the ugly ones. It's like they they bring me joy <laughs> in some way. Here it is. I'll I'll put it in the chat for people to look at. It, it's I I the, when I saw this, it was one of the first memes I saw this morning. It was from the trailer they put out. I think yesterday or the day before. It might have been just yesterday. Oh, well, let me post it. Whatever. Then fuck off. Then you can't see it. Uh, it, it's. <laughs> It's so bad. I'll, I'll put it in the um this uh who the fuck is the hangout chat? The hangout. They got chat. Here it is. Um, else? I just posted it. Got it. I'll I'll get I, I get it streamed. It's just. I'm gonna say this. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, I, I I'll get I'll I'll get this. Oh <laughs> Like, it's, it's, the memes just make themselves. It's just like, oh my god! Like, how could they fuck this up? <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious! Oh, Why? Man. Oh my god! Well, uh, oh man, this this reminds me. I was actually going to script out a video on how on the downfall of Western gaming. How how this is what Western gaming is reduced to. How. The characters are ugly. The story is going to be shit. Everyone is unlikable. The acting yeah. is shit. The animations are not there. The everything is going to be filled with some political agenda. I mm -hmm. mean, oh god, it's it's. There's no reason to buy a Western game anymore. That just isn't. Well, yeah, there but... are there are. I mean, it doesn't. I don't even know if it would count as Western. Um, but I one of the things that I say in the video that I will eventually fucking upload is that uh companies um and there are several but um a company like cd project red um mm -hmm. if that counts as western um no. then yeah, those, technically. Those... They're more eastern? i thought they're more eastern european than well, uh, yeah. you know western. i and that's the thing do they count or not but um the, the game assuming is western, they do though. let's just say they do for the sake of argument okay. that um they are one of the saving graces of you know the west of western media uh, of yeah. Western video game industry, you know th there are good games that are being made. I am still, despite the fact that they banned my account because they're fucking retarded, I'm still a fan of Rockstar. I still think that they put out good content. Oh, oh, I um, thought I thought CD Projekt Red banned you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, it was uh, oh, it's Rockstar. No, it was Rockstar. Okay. Uh, Louis had a video on it. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. remember. <laughs> it, it. Oh my god, that video, that video made me cringe so much. Well, who, how that how the operators like handle you he dodged every single flipping question he couldn't just, answer uh, it that's the issue is that um he he was specifically instructed not to answer the question yeah. and he answers that, he that, answers that, like a freaking policy. robot yeah well, that's this is why i don't buy western games fuck it it's just too much drama well that's fuck what i mean is that one of the, the main issues is that like they're so they they're unfortunately so wrapped up and and one of the things i will say that, that is an issue at ea and this is where i i know this for a fact um, Sim City, if you remember that game, yep. um, the most recent one, the online only thing that was placed in it, and I have to look this up, but I believe that that was not the decision of the developers, but it actually came down from EA. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why was that was one of the big things at a shareholder meeting was they wanted to make it 
uh, not online exclusive, but they wanted to integrate some kind of online component. And you will see that with just about every single EA game that comes out, is that it comes with some kind of online component. And it's because that was something that was pushed at a shareholder meeting. And unfortunately, in the West, that's a big thing. It's mm -hmm. what what do the shareholders want? What do they want? And it's like, well, the shareholders are a bunch of white-collar cocksuckers that don't know one fucking thing about video game development. So they should not actually have any kind of fucking engagement with what is actually put in the game. What is necessary to put in the game from a developer standpoint is what should be put in the game. And unfortunately, that is a big thing that you see at a EA. And I think that one of the reasons why they do so much social justice kind of stuff, such as cram diversity into battle, uh, uh, Battlefields 1, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. They cram yeah, yeah. diversity into Battlefront. They cram diversity in The Sims. They And it's in, in The Sims, it, has, it makes no sense to do it, but they still cram diversity in every single one of their games, and it is because that is something the shareholders want, because they have a whole angle about diversity. What was the diversity you know, element in The Sims? Was it like the, the yes. gender option? Uh, they they did the trans update where they gave. Oh yeah, their... that, that. Yeah, that was one I of the. Remember that? That 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 was um, stupid. Well, it was stupid, but one of the things that irritated me about it was that it unfortunately broke part of the game because part of oh. one of the uh 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 up uh, I forget what it's called one of the uh, expansions down the game uh, actually differentiates towards what kind of clothes you wear. What kind of oh, hair color? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, yeah, yeah. Whether you're male or female, and unfortunately, it broke it completely. And mm -hmm. I believe that was the uh, the it came. It was like the police scientist, and uh, I forget the name of what it was, but basically, in the detective job that you can have in that, it's completely broken, and it remains broken, and it was because of that update. So that update broke part of the game, and it's still broken. Yeah, and... I think uh, the one thing that I find issue about The Sims for The Sims is that The Sims is the kind of game where you can like dress like a guy, even though you're born biologically female. You could you could literally do that in like yeah, every I... Sims game. They they definitely made it so like they they added certain things to it that actually changed the 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 body type and certain other things <laughs> aspects to the to the sim that you're creating. Um, the issue with it was that they broke part of the game in the process, they never fucking fixed it, and they bugged the game, and it was bugged for about two months, where mm -hmm. it was, it had issues, and it would crash, and it was all over their forums, like, the game is buggy, you need to fix this, the textures are all fucked up on the outfits, you need to fix this, you know, and even to this day, they haven't fixed all of it yet, and one of the reasons why is because they downsized the team after they consolidated fucking maxis so they're now operating with our team yep other than and they worked on that update for over a year and mm. they consulted with like a, a slew of these like lgbt groups and that before they put it up and all it was was just a fucking outreach thing it was just them buying political capital and then forcing it into their game despite the fact that it wasn't ready to go up and unfortunately, that seems to be the priority. They don't really care that it wasn't functional day one. They don't care what bugged out in the game. They don't care what aspects of the game they broke. They don't care. It was about virtual. And boom, that's how they operate. And that's not something that is going to lead to future profits. It is something that is going to turn people off to their games. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but I yeah, I but to... in the same vein, uh, AAA Japanese developers have problems as well. I mean, look at Final Fantasy Fifteen. It's it crashes. It's not. It the game is right, crap. right, right. I mean, mm -hmm. the, I mean, and then you see some Japanese launches from like Koei Tecmo. That okay, their recent launches are better, but it, it's really horrible on the PC. It's I mean, uh, like uh, Knights of Azura. I've been trying to play it, and you, you can't even bind the left and right trigger to anything. What? It doesn't work. The left and right trigger, you can bind them to the controls, but they don't fucking function in the game. And what? there's no update to fix this. Wow. Uh, 
I, I don't even know what to fucking even do in this situation. So I had to bind them to something to like the clicking in the joysticks because the entire it, it, you can't even bind two options. It, it's retarded. Well, and um, I, I would say that the difference is that that is a problem with the game itself. And my position, is, at least on The Sims, was that the game was oh, yeah, functional, yeah, yeah. and then they yeah, made okay, they yeah, added it, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, it yeah. became dysfunctional. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I get the point, but I'm just saying that you know Japanese games are not I immune to this. It's, I mean, at the start of like Knights of Azure and um, a Tyler Sophie, the game would dump all its things on one core in your CPU, and uh -huh. then it was after everybody complained that they would, they patched it in order to dump the load evenly off your other CPU of the other cores. It's fucking retarded. Yes, yeah, I play on PC. I don't play on console. Fuck the PS4. Yeah, well, that, the, that. the problem is with Japanese game developers is that I, I hate it that they are doing PC port like terribly every single time. Like, no, every... no, not all the PC port. Well, not, not all. Was all right. not, not all, okay, not all, but most of the time. Uh, especially when we're talking about like uh, and the, the, the Warriors games have bad PC ports. Oh, port. they're horrible. They're nah, bad PC no, ports. Don't, don't play them. Yeah, I, I, it's terrible PC port. I really want to play it, but they, they, put, they ported the PS3 textures, which is stupid, really stupid. And they, uh, there are a lot of options that are like, like missing. Like, uh, first of all, the button prompts, like you have to like hack the game just to get the button prompts. Uh, the just, I played the game with a controller, obviously, because the mouse and keyboard sucks. So I, I have to like had a texture, uh, a separate texture loader of some sort just to get the button props in just to get the so that it looks like it's you press y it's it's in the, it's the uh, displays the keyboard buttons basically which is also freaking stupid yeah well, that's with, though. with mm -hmm. that said though um it's not as though you know ubisoft is batting a thousand <laughs> on easy ports yeah among, among yeah. others yeah yeah yeah, to, yeah okay yeah, but being honest though, like Japan's not perfect. It's much better, but it's not perfect. Yeah, it's it's, it's uh, much no better. Means. Yeah. No, but to be fair, Koei Tecmo is improving. Their latest ports are somewhat buggy, but are still better than um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. than the yeah, previous yeah. one. Like Toki Den and uh what Dynasty Warriors uh, Eight Empire. Yeah, that was buggy as fuck and doesn't work properly. They never patched it, but the latest two, it, it's slightly better, slightly. Slightly. And I think Berserk turned out okay. Oh uh, yeah, Berserk. Uh, it was all right. Yeah, the Berserk Muso. I think that turned out okay, although the game itself was not very good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's at least at least they got the PC port right. Anyway, yeah, yeah. anyway, we got way off topic. We're still talking yeah. about the BBC <laughs> documentary. <laughs> it was, I think, mostly my fault for that. I yeah, it, that. it's all right. It's all right. It's fun. So anyway, so I, I like piling on. It's just <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> We're too busy um, memeing about bad games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, Jesus Christ. Well, to be, fair, to be fair, we only brought this up because, well, Japanese media is the only thing that's growing. Like Western media, like cartoons and movies and other things, it's not popular yes. anymore. Yeah. That's a good point. And the, only thing Hollywood, and the only thing Hollywood is trying to do is they're trying to take Japanese franchises and make them shit oh, yeah. and Americanize them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of forget that that one that one movie, uh, what is that movie called? I, I forgot. Uh, they were trying Dragon to Ball like. Evolution? Mm, yeah, Dragon Ball Evolution, definitely. <sighs> Just God. I can't wait for Ghost in the Shell, everyone. Please watch it. <laughs> oh I know. I have seen trailers for that. I'm just looking at it, like cringing. I've seen trailers. It's, it's, shit. Like, uh, it's good. Shit. Yeah, watch good. The anime. It's, it's, just watch the anime. It, it's garbage. Yeah. I I only watched the first movie. And even then, I thought, okay, no, 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 that's, 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 no, wrong, wrong. Why is Scarlett Johansson not naked? Like, if Scarlett Johansson is naked, I would probably buy a ticket for that. But no, she's I, not I naked. I don't even know why. Nah. I, I, I don't even think, I think they miscast that completely. And it, oh, it just doesn't look interesting. Ah, let's talk about that miscasting. That was, that was like, I, the thing is, I, I, I had the initial opinion. It, it's funny. I had this initial opinion that Scarlett Johansson would be perfect, and not not in a good way, as in Scarlett Johansson's acting. They're like not so great, and she has this like robotic face, and I was like, okay, who has that other robotic face? Oh yeah, Kusanagi. Uh, okay, maybe maybe she might work. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe she might work. <laughs> oh, I don't, god. I don't oh, oh god, I, uh, that hair, her haircut is so bad. <laughs> yeah. Every time I look at the haircut, I'm like, God damn! Like, 
Looks so no, but bad. okay, I, I, I stand by. I don't, I don't, I don't care if this makes me sound like an SJW, but I, if something is the way, it, I want things cast the exact same way that the creator wrote it or drew it. I want it exactly the same. If the character was Japanese in the original, it will be Japanese in the casting. No change, no differentiation, nothing. No race lifting, no whitewashing, none of this shit. Exactly what the creator wanted or originally made. It, it, like I, I think the reason why they did it was to try to tie a big name with the role, but I, I oh, would say that I – and that's what I – well, that's what I mean is that you – they're, they look at – like when it comes to the movie industry, they look at everything from from the position of how do we make this as profitable and have as least amount of risk as possible for when we put this out. And I think that's from the oh, position – that's what they operated <laughs> from. And unfortunately, I don't think it's going to pay off for them. I think oh, that no, they would they have ruined, been better off. They ruined the franchise. Fuck off. They, like they ruined every other Japanese franchise they touch. Fuck off. They, they – no. This okay, is why I hate it, Hollywood. They would have – if they they would have been smart – or if they wanted to be smart, they would have brought in, um, you know, th there are different Japanese directors and Japanese that this and that for the movies that exist and that come out of Japan. And there are, I've seen a few, uh, actually, and they could have brought one of those people over to cast the film, work on the film, make the film, just make the film what it is and actually work with the original team to the extent that they could. Um, even though that doesn't like guarantee the that. latest Godzilla one. Well, something, some somebody that has a good reputation that they could bring in to show the investors that, like, look, look, look at this guy. He's making big money. That's why we're bringing him in. He's got talent. He knows this uh, this sort of scene. He knows how to make a Japanese movie. That's why we're bringing him in, and it will alleviate any kind of of worry on the investors' part to where that will probably happen. But instead, it seems to me that they just said okay, let's just make this movie and we're going to make it cheap and we're going to put some big names in it and that we roll. And but No, we're going that. to Americanize it. We, we, we have to appeal to the masses, the normal fags. I mean, fuck the fans, oh. right? <laughs> just, yes, I use, it, that term, it, it, I use that term purposefully. I, I don't care if someone gets triggered by it. It's just <laughs> risk-averse. That's my opinion of that movie. It's just ah. risk-averse and it's not going to work because of that. And that's all there really is to it. But I, I would I, really I, love to see the sales, though. I, I want to see whether or not it's it going to sell. Be good. It, I it won't know. be good. Yeah, I don't know. We're, we're going to see. Maybe Will it be better than Ghostbusters 2016? Yeah, probably. Mm, yeah, but that's yeah. a pretty fucking low bar. But <laughs> yeah. here's, here's, my, here's, my, um, here, here's where I grade it. Will, it. will it manage, despite its massive fan base, uh, you know, or, or with its massive fan base uh, as a you know an anime or as a franchise, Will it beat um, uh, John Wick 2 in the box office? The answer is no. No. Nope. It won't. So that is a failure in my, in my position. Because when you make, let's say, a Bioshock movie, or you make a, a Final Fantasy movie, or you make a movie about um, – they make a, let's say they make a Grand Theft Auto movie, and it fails to beat a, another random action movie or another movie of the same genre than that because you should be coming in with the audience ready to spend their money. And mm -hmm. when they don't show up, that's on you. That's your failure. Yep. And we're going to continue a little bit on the, the documentary. And Mumbot has a couple of interesting opinions here. Uh, when Stacey Dooley uh, tweeted, myself and people in the real world. Okay, I'm going to stream it Wait for a second. I'm going to stream it. Uh, okay. Yep, it's on the stream. Myself and people in the real world will continue to chat like reasonable individuals. Bye. Then Mobot answered, There's nothing reasonable about using Japanese cartoons to distract from the child rape epidemic gripping in your own country. Then linking, linking to a Guardian article, I think. Recorded rapes of children rose from 5,878 in 2011 2012 to 11,947 in 2015 2016. The figures suggest that 109 out of every 100,000 children were recorded as being attacked in England and Wales. So basically, she's just go coming into Japan and to educate. Yeah, we should treat children better, guys. Looking and then looking back at the well, UK. Well, that's, well, that's what I'm talking about is that, you know, you have you have someone engaging this from the position of being a chauvinist. That is what they're doing in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you see this in the UK. And I know I've talked with uh, Sargon Avakad about this more than once mm -hmm. where they have an issue 
in the United Kingdom of cover-ups of child rape. I've talked to Kraut T about the child molestation and the rapes going on in Germany. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm certain that that's happening in Sweden as well. You see, in France, you mm -hmm. see different nations all across Europe having an issue with not just rape and molestation, but rape and molestation of minors. So mm -hmm. while this is we're going to a nation that does not have this same problem and you are lecturing them about the art they create, you know, it's, yeah. it's a farce and it's something that should be pointed out to this person, but I don't think they're going to fucking care based on their candor on Twitter, which is acting like a gigantic cunt. You know, a yeah, child. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I replied to one of her things. I, I, she hasn't blocked me, but I think she ignored it. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't think yes, she I replies to criticism. I sent my video <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Nice. That other, guy, video, I would have sent that other guy actually responded to it. The other guy, uh, uh, I'd have to go okay. look what he said, but he basically dismissed me. Um, oh, but, no, uh, well, of course. I mean... They, right. they don't have there's no argument here reality and fiction are different and it, you're trying to conflate the two and well w what argument can you actually make and that guy went that you made on the video uh, that you highlighted on the video that you had a twitter spat on he was basically saying uh what is fiction what is real oh my god i can't believe it then you responded okay with a joke then he's like oh it's just my opinion it's just my opinion i was like you're, you're basically I don't know what you're, you're trying to dis you're dodge the entire issue at hand because it, it's just a cop out. No it, and that's what, like I said, it's what people rely on. It's what they it's when they actually put forth an opinion and it's not and it comes with something else. It comes with another thing, wh which means that in it with this woman who says that the end goal is to ban this material to whatever extent that she wants to ban it. She, her, mm -hmm. not some organization not some government body it's not you know written out in a bill it's just this person's whim of what should be banned and the the second that you call them on it they immediately back off it and pretend that oh no this is just my opinion and it's like no you're you're actually calling for something and i'm actually addressing you by what you're calling for mm -hmm. and it's disingenuous for you it's dishonest to just pretend as though that it's just like, well, I'm not actually following through with any uh, on this and anything. It's just like, oh no, it's just a documentary that's now streamed all over the world. That's no big deal, you know. Oh no, it's, no. It's um, I think uh, Stacy Julie put out a tweet. It's like, oh, oh, wait, it's freedom of speech. I'm just expressing my opinion. Well, mm -hmm. your opinion <laughs> carries a carries the intention to ban something. Oh, right. that's the difference between freedom of speech. It's no, I I, I replied to it, and uh, when your opinions cause for the banning of something else it's 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 no longer a freedom of speech issue it's a call to censorship and no you you have no right to call to censorship no one does this is actually and i'll explain why this is fucking stupid the irony when and this is from stacy dooley the irony when people want freedom of expression but attack you for expressing yourself when you have a different opinion and the issue is, and I sent like the next tweet was just me making fun of her, and I like I just found a picture of like a guy making a retarded face, and I just I, I just I, and I linked her in there, so she saw that tweet, and it, it's just it's so stupid because it's like listen, you're using your freedom of expression, okay? You're making this documentary from the angle of saying these artists are creating child porn that molesters are going to act on. And it's like you are intentionally fucking smearing hopes that the government or a mob prevent them from creating material. That's what you're actually trying to do. You're propagandizing against these fucking people. And you expect there to be no resistance to you and you expect me to like respect your freedom of expression. Your freedom of expression is directly trying to inhibit the freedom of expression of another person. Okay, you're the fucking asshole in this, Stacy Dooley. You're the asshole. But unfortunately, she's a dumb cunt and can't actually understand this. She's too thick to actually. I've, dude, I've talked to artists that believe this shit. Artists, artists, uh, that, artists as in artists, uh, actors or draw people who no, draw artists, artists that people draw. I've talked oh, okay. to people on DeviantArt that believe. I did a video way back when about an artist that I interacted with who I completely flipped out on because it, the guy drove me absolutely crazy, where uh -huh. 
he was basically going on a tear on his blog because I followed him on DeviantArt. He was going on a tear about how he believes other artists on DeviantArt should stop drawing certain things. What? And it, it was, and it's like, and I said to him, like, you do realize that what you're calling on, what you draw actually falls within what you're talking about. And I just pointed it out to him in a video. Uh, I pointed oh, it out his clear yeah. hypocrisy. So you know what he says in, in response to that? What? He goes, he goes, oh, well, you know what? There are things of mine that I do self-censor on, that I do take down. You know, Wait, I'm what? very careful about what I upload. And on certain, on, certain, on certain artwork that I have drawn, I actually just throw it away and scrap it. Yeah. And it's like, you, you yeah, but... are a self-censoring authoritarian. Like, you, you are a, just, you're, like, I don't know how to fully explain what kind of person this is. Like, this is the kind of person that in Nazi Germany would have tucked his tail and not said a fucking thing about the persecution of others around him. That's who this fucking guy is. He is pathetic. I think, wow. it, would, I think it would go yeah. further. I think it would start reporting people for doing things that he's yes. that he thinks yeah. is uh, wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like um, he, he would be part of like the, start uh, policing people. He, he'd be part of uh, what is it, the Stasi, or yeah, the Stasi yeah. in Eastern <laughs> Germany. You yeah, know, he he would just be a rat for a living because he's that much of a yeah. like. It's beyond a cuck. He's like a proud cuck. <laughs> you know, he wants oh to actually God. try to hurt others. Other artists, fellow artists, he wants to actually prevent them from not just making a living, but just being able to express themselves on a public yeah. forum. You know, yeah, it's, no, it's insane. That, no, that's why I said there's a big difference between voicing an opinion and calling for the censorship of Japanese culture because you personally find it gross, quote unquote. Yeah, it, there is a big difference. You, there's no different. You, uh, I can't believe some people are unable to see that. Oh, and by the way, uh, the things that I saw on that documentary, they basically showed this like uh, this head this store where it contains lots of head type uh, head uh, materials, basically just head type bagas, do and everything like that. I look at those yeah. things. I have seen worse. I have seen way worse. And you're going to just censor oh, sure. that? <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> just uh, I. I Oh, I seen worse, but only only in passing because I don't read it. Um, I just don't read it. Mm -hmm. Well, no, here, here's here's um, like I said before, and I said this before we actually did this stream. Um, in regards to like graphic content, um, what one of the visual novels that I recently played that um has a a, a decent amount of fucking graphic content mm -hmm. is Euphoria, and that is a basically a torture anime or visual novel rather and um the issue that uh that exists with that kind of material is that the the people that would have an inclination towards that kind of visual novel or may rather uh would be someone that has more sadistic tendencies or maybe has an aspect to the personality where they have an antisocial personality disorder or some you know variation of it or a mild form of it they may have an inclination towards that kind of material. Mm -hmm. And maybe in worst case scenario, they act on that material. They reenact what they've seen in that visual novel in real life. They do something like that. Um, well, that is still the fault and the action of that person. It is not the visual novel. The visual novel is not calling on that person to do anything. It is that person acting on their own initiative. Yeah, and again, it's, it's basically to, the video game violence argument. It's it's yes, basically the same yes. thing. And the, the unfortunate part of this, um, and why I'm laying this out, is not just to lay it out to, to, for an explanation of why the argument doesn't make any sense, but that is the argument of the other side. And when I say this to them, they don't actually understand this. They don't actually understand that they see the world as people reflecting on art mm -hmm. um the, uh, art actually reflecting reality and unfortunately because they ex and i'm sure that if you had someone like professor jordan peterson on here he could very much explain this even though it's kind of a goofy issue but mm -hmm. he could because being a social construct people acting on art 
because they are a blank slate. They have no <laughs> they have no actual agency on in their own right to act. It's them acting out art. That's how these people view the world. They don't believe yeah, that's in actual retarded. agency. Yeah, it is fucking. That's fucking retarded. It, but it, it, it doesn't. Matter. It, how, how can no? How can people not have individual responsibility? They don't. How they that deny that. They deny that. They deny actual individual agency. You see this. You see this with, say, for example, Islam. Don't say this about Islam, or uh, they'll be uh, you make them terrorists. And yeah, that that is a social constructivist argument. That is what they are saying. That these people do not have individual agency. They're simply reacting to whatever, oh, culture, to oppression, yeah. to whatever. They're it's, an authoritarian. That obviously they're gonna have that mindset. Well, it's not just it's not just yes, authoritarianism, but it actually goes beyond that. They're yeah. actually deluded in terms of what they believe. And unfortunately, because they view everything through that lens, it basically makes them in unable to actually understand reality as it plays out. They can watch something play out in reality. And their only reaction would be to go into cognitive dissonance because mm. they, they won't actually confront the fact that what they believe is wrong. And this is one of the this is one of the fundamental problems that we have right now in the West is that you have these scatterbrained collectivists running around trying to designate like what kind of art and material in the world is leading to somebody's oppression. That is what's occurring. You see, and that's a Nita's whole stick is this material is leading to oppression. It is reinforcing oppression of different people, whether it's black people, women, what have you. That's her whole stick. And she is not alone. And it's one, one of the videos I made a while back was about how certain ideas have grown out of um, – just the person, the personality, certain ideas expanded out of. And I, it's what I said about um, uh, Colin Marotti when it Moriarty. came to ga gamer entitlement. Oh. That, 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 that perception of gaming and of the industry and of the gaming community as consumers, it, it is now greater than him. More people believe that now because of him, but he's now gone. He's relegated to whatever bullshit with fucking what's-his-face, the, the boring white guy that he was with before. But – the issue is, though, that despite the fact that he's no longer relevant, he's no longer at IGN, he, that notion of gamer entitlement is still everywhere. You'll still see it everywhere. You'll see journals constantly say it, and you'll see people in their comment section bringing it up. It's still all over the place. You'll see it on – um, what's that uh, forum that everyone makes fun of? Neofag? Uh, yeah, there you Neofag. go. Right there. <laughs> yeah, that you'll see it all over there too. It permeates it because it is now – a concept that has now outgrown Colin Marotti. And the same thing goes with Anita Sarkeesian as it relates to gaming. That Oh, no, people, I agree. Yeah, no, people I... operate from that notion of her – they operate from her position. And they now view all video games through that lens. And unfortunately, I don't really know a good method of getting those people to disengage from that position. I don't know how to basically – you know, deprogram them from uh, believing this bullshit. Literally, literally. someone in the chat uh, mentioned, uh, talking about, I am so confused. SJW logic makes no sense. If they're a cultural relativist, why don't they say of hentai, it's just their culture? Because, exactly. See, that 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 is the big thing, right? Because they will use that against, like, Islam or, fu or fundamentalist Islamic countries in the Middle East and in North Africa. They'll make that excuse about their about those countries, about what they do there. But they won't do that about East Asia. They mm -hmm. won't do it at all. And so that is a form of cognitive dissonance. That is holding two different foreign countries to do two different standards mm -hmm. that exist at once in your own mind. That's pure cognitive dissonance. But the reason why that they're doing games and anime and the rest of it is because within their social circles, that is acceptable to do. It is acceptable to be a, a chauvinist towards those com th those companies, that country, those games, that everything. It's acceptable to them. They make that exception, and therefore it's acceptable. Yeah, so you, you because you can do it. Literally, yeah, it's it's socially acceptable among their circles. So that's why it becomes an, a, a, an exception. And you see this 
with mm -hmm. like I've done a million videos on it. These mm -hmm. people always cite Japanese games. They always, always. cite them but without without and, without failure. Like I recently yes. uh, made that video of that the that flipping polygon celebrating how Mass Effect Andromeda is gonna have butt sex and. And like this in the same freaking uh in the same freaking outlet, they're like criticizing Dragon's Crown and Bayonetta for being sexist. It, it is just that, oh god, yeah, that is actually like it, it's obvious hypocrisy. But unfortunately, uh -uh. with that, that is where it, that is the separation between the like the indoctrinated versus the the the, the like a lot of the, the, these journals are just corrupt. And they're just yeah. serving their own political end. They don't give a fuck about any of this. It's just what serves our political interests right now. What is ex what is politically expedient right now? And the most mm -hmm. politically expedient thing is to disregard all that shit you said. It's just like with IGN, with them having multiple forums about how uh, – what's what's the word? Objectification of women is the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. You know. Meanwhile – Welcome back to IGN, and today we're looking at the cosplayers stripping <laughs> at, you know, this convention. And we're not going to pay them shit, and we're not going to cite who they are, but we're going to put them in this five-minute long video with some EDM music in the background. Be sure to click on some articles and make us some money. It's the same thing. It's about what's politically expedient at that moment for them. And that's the separation. That's the difference. It's the politically expedient hacks that are just trying to serve their own interest. Mm -hmm. And the true crazy ideologues, and you'll find most of those ideologues on YouTube. That's where you'll find them. The journals oh, are mostly oh, just oh, most definitely. Yeah. Um, but uh, he's okay. He's my assumption in all this, isn't it? Aren't they attacking Japan and Japanese culture and East Asian culture because it threatens their hold on uh, on Western media? Because they can, they have a hold on Western media. They can control it. They they get what they want, but they don't get what they want. In Japan, mm -hmm. I mean, you can have social justice was complaining again and again and again about Japanese things, but Japan's still going to produce it because it was in Japan. That's what the people want. That's what the otaku's want. That's what makes money, and they can't find a way to restrict that because people are continually buying it. And even though they shame people, they're not. They right. can't target it, it the people work. Uh, that that want these things because they're already in a group that don't want these things that don't want to be right. touched or to the censored. And mm -hmm. that's why, like, that's why they go after localization companies. That's why they go after the UN to then pressure Japan. Oh yeah. That's yeah. Of course. Mm -hmm. Because they can't, they're, they're not in, well, they are in Japan to some degree, but they have no influence in Japan because right. they, they know the developers and creators don't listen to them. Um, they have no influence in Japan. Japan is very money orientated. They go after what makes money and, Appealing to otakus, appealing to you know, uh, gamers is what makes money in Japan. They're not going to deviate from that at any point. The all, the, one of the things that Japan, as far as I can tell, doesn't have, and I've looked for this a little bit, um, are the organizations, the non non for profits, the political organizations that influence the companies. Because if you look at EA and you look at a few different companies, but EA is a very classic example. Um, most of these, like, there, there are just immense amounts of these of special for projects. So many of these groups out there, and they're all out west, you know, in California, and so are all these companies. Mm -hmm. So you have. EA well, and all I these different it. developers a block away. I mean, obviously they're separated when it comes to developers, but the corporate main offices are usually located in a certain area. And most of these companies are fucking, you know, a couple blocks away. Well, and um, what it's I know very is easy to they, influence them. Well, what I know is they don't, they don't have special interest groups for like social justice shit, but they do have like, um, uh, yes, they do. Like, no, uh, no, I'm, I'm saying like in Japan, they don't have these right, groups. Right. However, they, they, they have, they, they have these like family orientated groups. These like, oh, let, you know, we, we should, you know, take this out for, you know, kids or something, you, you know, yes. we have those type of groups, like these soccer moms and those things. Japan has those. Japan doesn't have special interest groups for like social justice shit because, well, to be honest, they, it's a homogenous society. No one fucking cares. 
No one's mm. saying we need more black people in video games. There's no black people. There's like no black people in Japan. Who cares? So yeah, yeah. that's that's the point. It, it's a homogenous society. So I mean, if you make something with Japanese people, Japanese people will like it. If you like put a black person there, you start getting questions as to why is this black person there? I mean, yeah. this is a Japanese game. Right. Yeah. So, I, I mean, so they do, <laughs> they do have special interest groups. It's just not in social justice. That That's just my research that um, yeah. I found out from mm-hmm. that. I, I agree with that. And and one of the things that um uh, with APA in Indonesia, uh, one of the things that I don't think you'll quite understand, and I don't think unless you are part of, um, you know, a country like Germany, although with America, it's something special. Like mm-hmm. you have no notion of the amount of white guilt that exists in this society. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no, I... Okay. Uh, no, I, I completely understand that. Um, living in Australia, you see this yes, white guilt. The white, pe- uh, white people are so horrible. They do so many horrible things and they need to be eternally paying for it for the rest of their existence. It's, it's fucking ridiculous. I don't understand it. And, it, and to add to yeah. this, I'm not white and I can see this. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I would say Australia is another good one. I've heard a lot about Australia having that same kind of problem, and you see this. Australia is banning games left and right. Oh yeah, they're very authoritarian. uh, Yeah, the web. Yes, the country's banning shit, but it's not because white guilt. It's because yeah, yeah, of course. Because I'm not saying that. Oh, this is horrible because it you know it's immoral or some shit, and the government's very um. Oh, the government's fucking retarded, but yeah, so. Yeah, the white guilt runs. Uh, the white guilt is prominent in every Western uh, country. Yeah, for some reason, it, yeah, I, I don't understand it. And it, it's really, it's really weird because um, uh, one of the things that I talked to Sargon about was the power of calling somebody a racist in mm-hmm. uh, in England or in the UK. Like it has so much power in the UK to call somebody a racist, oh, oh, and it oh, does same here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it has and it has phenomenal yeah, power here in the United States as well. But it's like the the issue with with racism in the United States, I would say, is that if um, if you were to say to somebody like, oh, you're being if, if someone were to say you're being a racist in the United States, more times than not, uh, what everyone is going to assume they meant by that is that they they hate black people. They're, they they will not think of Latinos. They're not going to think of Asians. They're not going to think of Native Americans. They're going to think, oh, that guy hates black people if they were to say you're a racist. So I would say that. He, even in the United States where it has a lot of power, I like I think it only has a specific it has power, but only really towards a sp- one group, I would say. Yeah, mm. yeah. In Australia, it's kind of the same. Um, you, you say, oh, you're racist. It's usually towards um, the aboriginals. It's not towards right. Asians. It's not towards anybody else. But recently, it's been more they're using races to conflate Muslims with this group. It's just fucking yes. It's not a race. Aww. It's a fucking yeah, religion. Yeah, I've seen a it's lot a of religion. That too. Oh God! If somebody says I hate Buddhists, do, do people say you're racist against Asians? No, I, I don't <laughs> see that happening. <laughs> Fucking hell! Okay, guys, uh, I'm gonna show you. Uh, we're, I think we're getting a little off topic again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. It's okay. But I just want to tell you about the going back to the BBC documentary thing. It's just the moral busybodies. These people. I, do you think that the uh, documenter has some form of white guilt? Uh, no. no, no, no. Okay, no. So basically, no. Just, uh, basically, what I want to say is that uh, the the people who are interviewed in this documentary, they basically went out to say that the documentary misrepresented some of the things they say. Yes. And one of the things that and one of the people that got interviewed, uh, was uh got. Uh, basically talked it was the right I think it was like basically the magaka for girls on Panzer and really is. Panzer. yeah oh that's good yeah oh, that's did they actually interview him? amazing yes they did actually <laughs> how did they manage that yeah I, I actually kind oh, of surprised God. and here's the tweet I'm sorry to have to say, BBC 3's firm contains many misunderstanding and prejudice but I'm also glad to talk with her core discussion so basically, well, the guy... yeah, of of course, a Japanese person would say that they're polite, but mm-hmm. in in the same way, they did point out that the thing is not fully representing uh, the mm-hmm. entire yeah, yeah. picture. They, they, it's a yeah, very but... biased view of Japan. 
Yeah, yeah. Bobot also said that. Like, it's it's a courtesy, yeah. basically, just to say, just to say. Uh, yeah, like. well, that that's what happens when you interact with Japanese people. They they will show their displeasure, but they will be very polite about it. Mm -hmm. Um, that that's a yeah, good quality. It... Too bad I don't have that. I'm, I'm not <laughs> fucking polite. Well, I, oh, it's not, it's not necessary. Oh, by the way, uh, like right on the end of this, I think we're gonna we're going for like almost uh hour and fifty minutes. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the end of the documentary, in which they had this flipping beetle file guy who had this doll, and he brought <laughs> right. this everywhere. And it was the most bizarre thing that I have seen in a while. I I did not believe a second for a second that it was real. Like that that oh, you think he was a be, troll. I I had to believe that 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 guy should uh, that guy's a troll. I I can't believe because <laughs> what? I mean seriously, uh, Louis, uh, because you haven't watched it. It's a guy with a he's like half his freaking hair tied up like a freaking like Nico from Love Life. Like he had this <laughs> <laughs> he had this hair tied up like Nico from Love Life, and he he brought this freaking box contained a a life sized doll of like a kid, and he basically admitted, "Oh, I'm a pedophile. Yeah, I really want to be a pedophile." <laughs> it is holy mother of God. Like okay, okay, maybe. I, I was watching. I think the first... someone really. I think someone trolled the BBC. I yeah, think some, some. I think two can actually <laughs> fucked with them. That would be great. I mean, it maybe like I'm sure that I mean, considering all the weird shit that's out there, you know, maybe that guy is some fucking weirdo. There are plenty yeah. of weirdos. Here in the yeah, United yeah. States. He could be some yeah. crazy fucking weirdo. But yeah. if he did actually troll them, and like that comes out, like that would be so fucking funny. <laughs> he like it was, baited yeah. her in with this notion like yeah you know i like lowly or whatever and she comes in he's he goes to this wild spiel about how like oh yeah like i have this doll or this doll and i'm basically a pedophile yada yada she's like sitting there like with this like i love some of her faces that she has like she has these horrific faces like oh my god what is this <laughs> like, oh my god like she's so uh, cringeworthy you Oh, of course. No, this is that's the face of someone who hasn't experienced Japanese culture. You can tell. <laughs> the the ultimate normie comes to Japan. The ultimate normie. And well, the ultimate no, nah, the ultimate normal face. Like, what the fuck am I looking at? It's so horrible. How how could they show like these cute girls doing these things? No, nah, this is moral banned. Fuck oh. no, it's a fucking normal facts, man. Okay, the thing is, the thing I find hilarious about that Japanese guy is that. I really wanted just just for that Japanese guy. After being interviewed, they're like get they get out of from the documentaries. They and they've done filming, they've done interview, and the guy come out on Twitter is like, ha ha! I told the BBC, I said that I'm a pedophile, and I was that that would be like really damn good. And I was yeah. like, that was like I I'm not okay. I'm not actually a pedophile. I'm just actually acting. Be, uh, the BBC actually hired me. This is just a prank, bro. It's just a prank. So okay, uh, I think we all would love that. That that would be hilarious. <laughs> that, that but here, would be here's weird. the thing, though. Here's the thing with that, though. Let's let's just assume for a second that uh, that guy was legit. Okay, that guy is mm -hmm. a legit. Mm -hmm. Let's say he's a legit pedo pedophile. Okay, he's mm -hmm. a legit pedophile. Okay, so we well, there's two things. One, we go back to my argument of uh, the guy has a uh, inclination towards. Or disposition towards as a pedophile lol into little girls. So he has a disposition towards little girls, okay, mm. and content featuring it. That's his disposition. It's not because of that content that he's a pedophile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. actually if if he is, you have to substantiate that. Because other that guy probably has some other kind of disorder then, if that's the case. But second, okay, the reason why she chose to include that guy is to poison the well. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. to show you, oh, look, look at this fucking freak show. Look at this guy. It's like, yeah, I could do that when if we were to do a documentary about gay people. Let me go find the biggest fucking crazy looking man whore that I can find and represent oh. that guy as your average gay person. Let me go do that. And yeah, that's no, how you but, poison the well. Yeah, of course. That's very easy to do, though. Yeah, very, it's, very it's, easy. It's disingenuine. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not presenting... A, a rational argument is just saying, "Oh, th this is evil," and he's and he's my selective evidence to make sure people know it's evil. Exactly, that's, that's all it is. It's not doing anything.
And unfortunately, with um, this is the case for video games, but it's also the case for manga, anime, visual novels, everything. Mm -hmm. That the the majority of the people that you're going to be dealing with when it comes to hardcore gamers, hardcore manga readers, hardcore anime watchers, hardcore visual novel players, if that's even a thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it is. Uh, but with those people, they're not going to be politicians. They're not going to be <laughs> PR representatives at a company. They're not going to be public speakers. They're not going to be people that are that that public speaking comes easy to them. They're not going to be charismatic. They're usually going to be somewhat less charismatic. Even the average person, one of the greatest mm -hmm. fears, as far as I know, it's it's like in the top three or maybe even the the most the greatest fear is public speaking. As far as I remember, the most of the polls, at least here in the West, mm -hmm. people put uh, public speaking above death, that they fear public speaking more than they fear their own death. And wow. so here you have this group of people that, that most hardcore you know gamers that I've run into have been usually somewhat socially awkward people. Mm -hmm. um, they are the softest targets possible. Because if you engage me in a conversation, I'm actually – like public speaking for me now is not all that much of a difficulty uh, because I got used to it when it came to college because every most of the political classes that I took required some kind of public speaking. You had to speak in front of the class or you had to do something to that extent. Mm -hmm. And so with me, it eventually became more natural than it would if I never did it. And if I were to speak to this person, to Stacy. I could have easily, and, I'm, and you said yourself, Appa, that certain people in in that documentary blow her out of the fucking water. Yeah. And it's because she yeah. found somebody that isn't a soft target. And so how does she find, how does she counterbalance that? She finds a soft target to hit. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah. it is, it is yeah, prevalent yeah. because it, of the material that we're talking about. Yeah, it's convenient that you say that because it ex it happened exactly right after she interviewed the MAGA, the hentai MAGA translator, which basically... Exactly. Yeah, 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 she, she did an interview with him. I saw that bit. I actually liked that bit. And uh, he he pointed out, out to her that this is fiction. It's not real. And, yeah. you know, people may have problems, but, you know, you can't blame it all on fiction. That's their problem to solve. And she was like, oh, we have to agree to disagree. What's exactly. to disagree? It's, like I, it's not like real. Said, she does not believe in the agency of the individual. She does not believe in that. Yeah, she will not yeah, admit well, to they, that, yeah, that's obvious, but she does not believe in that. And that's the issue. That's the core issue under all of this. And I'm not going to go on the long tangent like I already did, but it, it's the problem of, yet again, that someone like me, she would not put in that documentary mm -hmm. because I nah. would fucking curb stomp her because I would go beyond just defending this material, I would go on the the offense and I would attack her because mm -hmm. the the problem that she has is that, is that she's operating from the position of a bias and yeah. she's yeah. not yeah, willing yeah. to engage. She's not willing to engage with the opposite viewpoint. She's not willing to do that. And that's the core problem with her as a person, but also it, it's, it's not just her. It's every single person, every journal that has ever covered this material has done the exact same fucking thing. They yeah. can't put themselves mm -hmm. in a position of, why would someone buy this? Why would I buy this? Could I buy this? Could I like this? They're not willing to even give it that. It's just, this is something foreign. This is something gross. This is something icky. And I'm going to show everyone how icky it is. It's just spectacle. It's lazy. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's it's something it's icky. Chauvinistic. It's something icky, and the people who enjoy it are like horrible human beings. Are gross. The, the, it's gross. The people who like it are gross, and you know we should censor it so they, you know, so they can, you know, reform and go back to normal society and be normal facts like the rest of us. It, it, yes. it reeks of bullying. It it, it yes. reminds me yes. a lot of bullying. Yeah, it is. It is bullying. That is. Um, uh, every every video I did, I have like four videos on just Japanese things. Uh, exclude one because it doesn't technically talk about that. It all it all looks at Japan from a Western perspective. They don't look at it from how a fan or how a Japanese person will look at these products. They look mm -hmm. at it from a Western perspective, a feminist perspective, a Marxist perspective. Oh. They don't look at it from 
the perspective of someone who likes Japan, who or is Japanese or enjoys this culture or is part of the subculture. They don't look at it from that perspective. They look at it from their from their tinted glasses and they say, oh, this is wrong. That is wrong. And people who like it are wrong. And therefore, you know, they're not fitting into normal society. We should censor it. We should ban it. We should shame them so they become normal fags like the rest of us all over again. And, and these people are usually, I, I mean, I can only speak for myself. I opted out of normal fucking society because it was shit. I like these things because they're different, they're unique, they're they're interesting, they're they're everything the West can never ever produce. For and and even when the, someone in the West can produce it, they will be shunned, they will be shamed. Uh, look at Honeypot. Look at the Honeypot developer. Mm-hmm. That guy uh, actually wait, they, lives like thirty minutes away from me. It's pretty funny. Oh, oh really? Wow. No, but when, yeah. no, but look at Honeypot. When it was first made, it was it, like you got. Attacks from like the press, social justice, they they hate it. Yet people like me who enjoy Japanese culture, I like it because it's a it's a unique Western take on Japanese culture. It's interesting. Yeah, it, it, it respects yeah, that, the culture. That that's another thing. It, it actually it doesn't actually shut on it. It's like oh, Japanese is suck. It's like it embraces it. It shows everything that's good about it. Like I I when I play Honey Pop, I never I didn't like I I thought it was like uh I thought it was a Japanese game. I thought it was a Japanese game. Then I found out, oh, it was actually a Western uh, game. Uh, how, 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 how do you think it's a Japanese game? It's, it's obviously Western. No, I I, I, yeah. I was blank. I, I, was, I don't know. Oh, back, when, back when I played it, I, I thought it was a Japanese game. Like, oh, it's, it's, it's anime, it's blah, 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 blah. Okay, they had a vigorous voice actor somewhere decent. Okay, fine. Whatever, I played it. But voice I, acting is decent? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, how how low is your uh, how much tolerance do you have how much <laughs> low quality do you care about do you what, not what? care about quality voice oh yeah i forgot do you watch dubbed anime you actually think dubbed anime is good what for god's sakes what okay not what i i only said guys, i only said this guy's fucking shaming you Okay, it's hard though because I know what he's doing, but I'm I actually don't disagree. Right? I'm I'm no, 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 no. I, I, I get, I get what you're trying to say. No, I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay, I'm just saying. Okay, okay, maybe decent, maybe decent. I, I'm not, I'm not. I just, maybe it was, decent. Maybe it, it was laughably bad. That it was, was la- why people liked it. It was oh. horrible, and people liked it because it was a novelty. Okay. Oh my, <laughs> it, it was, it was more than just a novelty. That that guy made a lot of fucking money off that game. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Yes, of course. Yeah. I made a lot of fucking money. Oh yeah, yeah. now he's really he, he's popular, and he and uh he, he's very popular amongst the community. People like him. Yeah, um, he, but he's yeah, really, no. he's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but I reached, I reached out I, to him one time, and I said to him because he he uh him and I used to go to the same campus. He goes oh really? Now, anyways, uh, University at Buffalo, and I was there at the I had just dropped out. And I tried to get in contact with him, and he completely blew me off. So oh. he's kind of he's kind of a dickhead in my book, but he's phenomenally successful. So he he'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he makes he makes one good game. That that that's that's nice for him. Oh well, there's going to be I think Honey Pop two in like twenty uh, eighteen or something. Okay. So there's, there's something oh. to look forward to. Oh Jesus Christ! Like the chat is like embracing the dub wars. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, the thing I, I've seen certain dubs that I've liked. Um, Samurai no, Shampoo. No, no, oh, no. Oh, dubs. Oh, oh my God, dubs. You're, you're going no, there. <laughs> there are some decent dubs. There are some decent dubs, but they're a rarity. No, I, I've seen more no, awful. It's just than good it, dubs. it feels awkward as fuck. It feels fucking awkward. You you watch the original, you watch the Japanese one, then you watch it dubbed in any other language. I don't care if it's Chinese, Korean, or whatever. Fuck, it sounds awkward. It yeah. sounds awkward. It just sounds yeah, awkward. Yeah. I, it, I, it doesn't sound I, right. I, I, I watch dubs. I understand why people hate it, but I still watch it anyway. Because there are some certain appeal, weird appeal on dub. Like, no, maybe. I, I didn't say it. Yeah, I, okay. I, I didn't you, say you it. No. Nah. Gas no, the dub uh, oh, the, Has anyone tried playing Life is Strange dubbed in Japanese? <laughs> I tried. I tried, and I wasn't able to do it. But have... Uh-huh. Is, there a, is there a dub that, version of Japanese? I might yeah, play that. Yeah, it's in Jap- yeah. It's a Japanese dub. Uh, no, I, I, I don't want to. No, 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 no. I don't think it. it. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's gonna be good. I don't think it's gonna improve it in any way. Okay, being, maybe slightly, slightly. Being the, the company, the company that's behind it, probably not because they are incapable of. Um, well, there oh, is no, no the really is social. Shit. Well, the, the, well, the thing no, is, the like, there's no shit, like obviously. the people, the the people, like any company that hires Ashley, uh, Ashley Birch. Birch to voice act in their game that is a political hire that is them virtue yep. signaling when they hire her i am convinced of that at this point horizon zero done oh 
Oh, Horizon Zero Dawn, yeah. I, I remember that. I mean, wasn't it like, oh, white people are evil, white scientists destroyed the world, and these black people that are saving it? Fuck off. Oh, I haven't played it. Like, that I, never exists. I, I've heard some redeeming factors. Oh, of I spoiled it, it for everybody else. It's but, not a but, game but, that I would ever play. It, it seems really boring, but. It is Other very boring. That. It's it's generic. It's your generic open world collectathon, um, yeah. but it, but the story is you know white scientists kind of like they destroyed the world through their technology, and you know these black scientists are trying to save it, so they clone the uh, the main scientist who's a white woman who's going out and saving everyone, and she's a strong protagonist. You know, well that well, that is true. That is true. White scientists will do in the world. Fucking butch and ugly as fuck. <laughs> I'm, I'm, calling I was just now, the, the... I'm calling it now. The end of the, the end of the world will be because of white scientists. I'm calling it now. That is a fact. <laughs> oh, oh, of course. It's always white people that you know wrong. I mean, like Japan, no, they never even white what they scientists. Did nothing. <laughs> they, they, they are, they are the fucking, um, like the, the I, they I, are the privileged seen, class. Like, have you seen like fiction? Yeah. Every single fiction is like depicting white people as like the evil scientists. Although to be fair, white people will save it as well. So. Maybe just a little bit of a, a little oh, bit. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, they like, like Horizon, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, like the like Mother Nature or some or Gaia or some shit. It's like black woman. <laughs> really? That's yeah. so weird. I I, I don't that, know. That, that sounds like it. they're trying kind of hard. That sounds like they're kind of forcing it. But um, okay. Well, that, 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 they got that like strong female protagonist kind of who's like everything. fucking manly and shit. So. Yeah, no, they're forcing it. They're forcing it. They definitely are. It's. I was uh, gonna say though. Yeah, um, isn't that the uh isn't that the yeah. uh the, the um enemy or not the enemy group but the uh, antagonistic uh faction in Steins Gate? Uh oh, white yeah. scientists. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know about Steins Gate. You never played Steins I, I don't Gate? Read no, I don't read vision novels Steins if it doesn't involve porn. Oh okay. uh, all vision novels there, there's, has to have time there, there's some like etchy in it, not much. Not, not much. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing. I I know I know the voice actresses. I I know the people that are in it. I I know they do other work, and I follow them in other work. But I don't read Steins Gate because it's fucking. There's 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 no hentai. Mm -hmm. No, okay. put a hentai in there and I fucking read it. it interesting. I've, I, I've played a lot of. I've actually re read a decent amount of visual novels that have no explicit. Oh, have you read Starless? With what? Have you read Starless? Uh, it's by I think the creators of Euphoria, Starless. It's. <laughs> I tell people to read it to get creeped out. Uh, probably not if I don't recognize it by name. But uh, oh, I, good, we're good, getting read off it. topic again. Please read it. Please do me a favor and read it. Then, 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 like Skype me or something and tell me about it. Oh, that reminds me. I was gonna <laughs> bring it up before. I'm trying. I, I have to look up the name of the visual novel. But um, I created a whole meme on it a while back on my channel. Uh, to, uh punish the lowly. God, what was the oh. name of that fucking one? Oh god damn it! Hey, I, I I remember I have to that. Look I, remember. Look, look I didn't it. finish yeah. it. I didn't finish. Oh, Beat Blades uh, Haruka. Beat Blades Haruka, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I never. I tried that. that. Fucking, I'm not good at management. I don't like management sims. I'm shit at them. I, I I used to be pretty bad, but I've gotten a lot better at them after doing stuff like within visual no, novels. No, some some are actually harder than others, but uh. Yeah, that's that's well, one where I, I gotta finish that one time. But uh, that's that's that like uh, any game now. Like I always think of that if it has like a lowly character and it, it's like, oh well, can I punish that character? <laughs> <laughs> well, so far I'm going through Rants uh, Six, and that's pretty good. It I, I I encourage people to check it out. You play as you play as the protagonist who is not doing anything special, just wants to fuck every woman out, the attractive woman out there. Oh, nice. See, I find that I find that, that kind that... of boring. Like, I find those kind of ones uh, kind of boring. Like, usually, I like some I know. Kind of story. No, there's an actual story, but that's his personality. That's all he. That's his goal in life. He doesn't fucking care about doing anything else. And like oh. in, throughout all the series, he's like he saves the world and does all all, all like awesome shit, but like no one knows about it. There's um there's a fucking uh etchy uh visual novel on Steam now that is a Yuri incest visual novel. It's called Love Ribbon. Wait, I um, think I've heard oh, I that. Oh, I thought you were talking about that's a there's a time travel one called Chrono Clock that came out. Oh yeah, well that's that's uh, that isn't Yuri though, I don't think. Oh I yeah, know. yeah. I I've heard this lo the Love oh, Ribbon. Oh yeah, I forget. You you like Yuri, don't you? Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, I do. You want the death of the you want the death of the white man. You you're a traitor, aren't you? <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> you want humans to be extinct. Like that's right. That's right. It's a it's a very slow genocide. 
It's very, very, slow, very slow genocide. Yeah, yeah, gas the gays. Yeah, it starts in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, they're already killing themselves. We're, we're killing themselves even faster. Just, <laughs> just slightly increase the, um, the, the rate yeah, of, we, you know. Do we, do we have really much else to talk about? Because I'm sure after I watch the full thing, I'll have a lot more to say on it. But Appa, you're, you, you're the authority here. Is there anything yeah. else you want to talk about with this? Okay, uh, so let's see. I, some, I've taken some notes here. Um, well, I just got to talk a little bit about... Uh, how does how do you think that especially when concerning about the censorship thing the bag the bagakas who are like involved in the entire uh in the business what what if what, what would their reaction be like they're seeing this uh we just see one from girls in panzer which they didn't did that did they like show it in there i i forgot that i think they did they didn't show it in there uh, basically I, I just want to say that, especially after they see this BBC thing, and if they made it, if they made it famous somehow, like what would their reaction be? Would there would there be just like there probably be there probably be outcry against it? Like uh, <laughs> when the UN did its thing, you have a lot of um, female mangakas and uh, artists yeah, yeah. and other things speaking uh, out against yeah, it. So um, there probably will be backlash to it. Oh yeah, uh, female mangaka. Speaking of that, I heard that most female most hentai artists are like female. I, yes. I, I've yeah. heard that. Yeah. So yeah, if yeah. The, if most of the porn, so basically she's going in there, uh, to that to that hentai porn store. She's going in there, basically criticizing hentais. They're like made by mostly women. Like th there's yeah. there's gotta yeah. be some form of an yeah. uh, how do you call it? No, no, no. Uh, it, it, no they, they're the wrong type of woman. They're doing the wrong thing. They're not oh. you know promoting the progressive I, agenda. I I don't know. Like I. Like, I would say, if I were to give her the benefit of the doubt, which, based on what you've reported, Appa, I'm stupid in doing, but if I were to give, give her the I benefit wouldn't. of the doubt, um, that's fair. I wouldn't. Right? Okay. But with, with certain genres of uh, whatever, whatever we're talking about, mm -hmm. um, there is definitely a very heavy female presence. Yeah. And I would say that as it relates to uh, Yuri, as it relates to Boys Love... There is a very significant female presence mm -hmm. in both of those genres, based on what I've seen. Yeah, I can't it's, oh, no, no, there, there is. There different is artists definitely. and producers and people that create shows and create visual novels that are all female. Uh, the you know, voice every, actors, every like, level. not included in there. <laughs> the voice yeah, actors. No, the, most, the voice actors. No, no, well, no, no. It definitely is mostly predominantly female. Like when the UN did it, like said to censor it, mm -hmm. you have predominantly women who works in these industries coming out and saying that. Um, we did we put all the effort in to build up these industries to to make a name for ourselves to give a women a place in this industry and now you are taking it away from us because oh, of right. your you know uh oh yeah um, I, I just notion remember. of um you know protecting these fictional characters yeah i just remembered uh the part uh basically they're like lots and lots of women working in there too so when when, when you went it's like try to take this down take this whole industry of head ties and bangers down you're gonna basically take away not only the jobs of men, but also women who are working in there. So, as much as the UN wants to parade this feminist thing, like bringing Emma Watson in there, like it, it doesn't, like it, it completely contradicts to what they're trying to do. Like, it, it, especially they, they have this mindset that, you know, especially uh, when they invited that pedophile guy and that manga guy, guy, uh, they have this mindset that most of the mangas and most of the this this whole niche thing they're like mostly men mostly straight mostly this and mostly that when they're actually a lot more diverse like if you actually see the anime conventions in the u.s alone this is not in japan it's in the u.s oh yeah they're very diverse they're well, like i would say that diverse it's, yeah it's mostly white men and women but that's because it's the majority demographic yeah in the yeah United States. yeah 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 and in the west no, if you go to like comicat or something in japan you will see and you will see like you can go and purchase dojins and stuff uh you will see lots of women there, mm -hmm. there a lot of women creators and female creators and things you would see that um, yeah but it, it depends it's dependent on genre um, yeah, the yeah. I think a lot of I think a lot of the idea people have of manga is they look at like Shonen Jump and they think oh it's only men writing it, and mm -hmm. for Shonen Jump yes it's mostly men. However, for other genres, um, the women are, women are predominant in like uh, Yuri and Boys Love, and uh, there are other genres that they do populate the mo they are the majority in, and mm -hmm. they will lose, 
work, they will lose their livelihood if, well, if these people get their way, start censoring products. Yeah, they would. And yes, um, yeah. like lots of artists are female. Lots of artists in games, like I, um, also, yeah, yeah it, it, not, not, it, it just doesn't just limit it to Japanese stuff, it Western stuff as well. Lots of female games. Well, fuck the West, I don't care. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow, right, right, right like that. Okay. But still, yeah, my no, point is. No, seriously, if you're in my position, who, who fucking cares about the West? The West is dead at this point. It's, it's, it's everything is, everything is for politics. You did a video on GDC and I was going to make one, but I've, I had no time. Uh, like yeah. everything is political. Every game is political. Every Western game is now political. It's it's always got a political message. What's the point in even playing? Not not every, but it's it's the the oh, issue. Come on, it's nearly all. Well, no, no, no. The, the issue that you're speaking to is that there is a major issue with over gratification of and and rewards and praise of shitty indie games that are quote unquote diverse and are progressive, whatever. And there is a ramming and a cramming of diversity and progressive politics into many many triple a games to the point where it is prevalent it is something yeah, you can but, point to. it is tangible yeah, but, yeah and it's and it's and it's it's a turn off it's not get it's not getting uh gaining more sales because of it i mean nobody's right you can't sell a game on diversity it, you can't say oh we well, have a black main character it, Who? here, here you know, here's why? the thing though i there was once upon a time that i actually was de was um i, I don't want to use the word defensive but i was willing to defend this kind of of not the politics but uh, the the notion of quote-unquote diversifying um, a mm. game, and it wasn't from the perspective of you add a, a black character here, you add a white character there, or whatever. Like, I mean, obviously they never add a white character unless they're like a white woman. But the point being that if you were to diverse a game, it could be like it's like uh, a Saints Row, where you can create your own protagonist. But the thing is, is that the thing I didn't understand at the time was that was already prevalent, and the game yeah. that is going to have a created protagonist is likely going to give that option already. The games that are going to have a set protagonist are not going to give you that option no matter what because they have a set protagonist. So it was a misunderstanding at the time. And I would say that there are still people now that mean well but mm -hmm. don't actually understand that, that these games are operating from the position of, like when they make a Tomb Raider game, it ain't going to be about Larry Croft, okay? Mm -hmm. It's going to be about Laura Croft. That's it. You got have a, the next Max Payne game is not going to be with Maxine Payne. It's going to be Max Payne. Mm -hmm. It has a set protagonist. So there's no reason to in any way decry that game for having a lack of a, a customizable protagonist because it's no, not no, one no, of those that, kinds of games. Yeah, but that's not what they're doing. They're trying to replace the main character. Like look at what Marvel did. Yeah. Uh, before yeah. they said they're not doing it. They tried right, to but, replace the main character it, with a, a diverse character and that's it's, the problem under, but but again you're you're approaching it didn't used to be that bad there mm -hmm. was once upon a time where it uh, wasn't as bad as it is now like every no, year I when it, it, no i agree it, 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 i agree there was there was a time when it wasn't as bad as it is now however now it's getting worse and it will continue to get worse and games will continue to sell less and less until the industry will crash and burns on itself Right, I, well, I just think that's that, what I predict. That certain companies, I will say, certain companies, if they do not change, um, I would say that it is going to be a problem. EA, in my mind, they stick out just by what I know of them. Mm. Um, they and there are others, but uh, they they seem to have a real affliction in damaging their own games for the sake of including diversity. And listening stupidly to their shareholders when they shouldn't. Um, I mean that they're them listening to their shareholders, which led to what they did to SimCity. Because of that, they downsized and closed Maxis. That mm -hmm. was the direct end result of what they did. They closed the entire fucking company. That isn't to say it wasn't a long-term solution, but based on what I heard and, and what was in the press and all the rest, it seemed like kind of a quick thing. It seemed like it was a quick decision. It didn't seem like it was something they rolled out over a long period of time. It was a bad release. And then that's what lit the match for, okay, let's consolidate the entire fucking company. And it, it's something that is untenable. Even as big as fucking EA is with all the, got, the, the billions that they still make to this day on their sports games.
Um, that no, road only goes so far. <laughs> yeah, it's not sustainable. It's it's going to collapse it's, at some it's point. It's going to collapse. Yeah. And it's going to be replaced by people who are more creative, infinitely no, more creative. Yeah, no, but that's the thing. I there's a problem with Western gaming that uh, doesn't that doesn't exist in Japanese gaming. You in Japanese gaming, you have doujin, then you have middle, then you have like uh, middleware, then you have triple A. You don't have middleware in um, the West. You don't, and yeah. and the indie is all hipster pretentious shit. Well, tri and triple A is pandering to the mm. what the hipster audience. It's it's. It's all marketed in one direction, and like there, is, said, there, there is no, there is nothing there to, you know. Yeah, there, there are, are very rare exceptions, but the, but again, these exceptions can't, they they're they not can't going to, you, you, they can't build an entire industry around several companies. It's just not profitable. Right, and that's one of the problems is that um, what one of the definites is like I, I'm not really big into the notion, um, uh, and this is a very this is conventional wisdom of gamers that. The industry will inevitably collapse again, like it happened oh, whatever, in the eighties. It's mm -hmm. inevitable, whatever. Yeah, uh, I'm not a big believer in that. But the issue is, though, if these companies grow in size and they have continued to grow in size, they've consult, they have merged, and they like Blizzard, Activision, and the rest. Um, th or not th? Well, THQ is one of the companies that consolidated and then collapsed. But um, you have uh, Take Two, which is one of the biggest. Um, they're a huge fucking company. 2K Games is not even the only part of it, but they are fucking massive. Uh, the issue is, though, um, if those companies all follow the same route as EA or THQ, although THQ is a bit different, um, if they follow the route of EA, they don't have the sports games to fall back on. One of the big reasons why Rockstar may someday do another bully game, despite the fact that the first one was not a commercial hit, is how much fucking money they made on Grand Theft Auto V. They're willing to take the risk with that, buddy, right? Yeah, because it doesn't matter to them. They're willing to take that creative risk because they don't give a fuck. And, and 2K is, and well, not, well, 2K as the parent company, but Take Two as the overall, the massive major parent company, they are, they have no interest in dictating to Rockstar about anything. The only thing where Rockstar could possibly lose, and it, it's scary because it could happen at Rockstar, and it's exactly what happened to Bioware, is brain drain. It is after sequel, a bunch of people leave, and they're replaced by retards and diversity hires. You put out another sequel, and then the same thing happens. A bunch of people leave, and you bring in a bunch of retards. Yeah, and that uh... is why... That's why Mass Effect Andromeda is the way it is. And that is mm. why. It's not just oh, about yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the pat It's the fact that the talent has drained from the company and they have not hired talented people in their stead. That's why you have what you have with that company. And it's why it's inevitable that it's going to collapse. And so if you expand that on a greater scale throughout the West, um, you may be right in saying that it could collapse. You may be right. But no, I, I hope it collapses. I, I don't think it will, though, because the industry is making too much money at the moment. Um, I don't think it will. Certain, collapse. I, 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 genres. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I, I, the collapse of middleware was, I think, something that uh, I, it, the middleware doesn't exist. Double A doesn't exist in the West, um, I think. But at the moment, I think that the biggest hit is becoming localization of Japanese products, because that's what's being affected most uh, over the past several years. Censorship has becoming more rampant uh, mm -hmm. when, when compared to what, like the, uh, um, what, around 2006 or something. It, it wasn't as bad. It was still there, but it wasn't as bad. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that um, it, in one part, it's become a problem because of the influx of games. Um, I, I, I can't, I like, I, I've heard of Japanese games you know, in the past, but it seems like now there seems to be kind of like a wave of Japanese games that are being brought to Western yes, audiences. Yeah, well, that's yeah. because, uh, that's because Japanese media is on the rise. It's becoming more popular as Western media is becoming more and more but, stale. But, and but my point in that is, um, and I don't necessarily disagree with your last statement, but um, my yeah. my position with it is is that um, the reason why you're seeing censorship like issues of censorship uh, uh go up and become a greater issue it is in part because you have all of these games being brought over to the west where they are being basically if they're not directly ported 
or localized by that company and they're basically handed off to a Western localized company, the issue is, is that that company is already infiltrated with social justice loyalists or sympathizers. Oh yeah, of course. That's that's obvious. I mean, that's obvious. I mean, they, after uh, what happened with Fine Blue Fates, I think uh, Treehouse, what, like had, they fired people and like re and hired new people. But fuck, I, I don't fucking know. I, I think they keep it the same though. I, I really hope they don't. But the thing is, I think Treehouse is kind of uh. irredeemable in some ways. It, it's Treehouse almost... is irre- in, irredeemable. Treehouse. Same with Nis America. Yeah, this. What, what the hell Same happened? With Nis America. What the hell happened to Nis, man? Like, uh, they, they, I don't know. They, they, they have a, they have a long record of uh, butchering games, introducing bugs, and a whole bunch of other stupid shit. Oh. And they have like a company policy where they can't release a game unrated because fuck company policy, man. It, it's ridiculous. No, um, Nis America is not filled with SJWs, but they are. Um, they, they, they're very they, rapid on their censorship games, and they make excuses to keep censoring games. Well, here, although here's I, the other thing. Hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Although I find it, I just a little bit. Although I find it kind of interesting that this was the one who was more interactive with the audiences. They, they, I, I've seen them like interact in their forums with the. Oh no, they, no, they interact with their audience, but uh, but again, they they happily surround themselves with a uh, with a fan base that will defend their censorship, that won't call oh. them out on it, that will complain, that who won't complain about it. And you have people it's... coming in and complaining and saying, "Hey, we want this uncensored. We want this uncensored." And there was a, "Oh, oh, make a petition. Oh, we can't do a company policy." They they will make every excuse they can in order to not release uncensored. Like Criminal Goes One, uh, Criminal Goes uh, Invite Only. I have it on PC. Um, I didn't buy it, by the way. But yeah, yeah it has an uncensored patch. What? I would say all I said was they censored the shit out of it, from what I heard. Yeah, mm-hmm. they did. They did, and the PC port is censored. But they're like, oh, you can mod, you can mod the game in order to uncensor it. You are you, you purposefully didn't do. You didn't uncensor it. You are leaving it up to the community to fix your mess. And that's what Nis America does. They they like they adamantly refuse to do anything themselves. So if they butcher a localization, if, if they like introduce memes and shit, and you want to fix it up, oh yeah, you, you can mod the game as much as you want, but it, they won't fix it. So, they will stick by their methods. So and basically, that's what it, makes it so basically, bad. this stems out of laziness more than actual uh, malicious like uh, ideology. Um, I, I don't know. It's not. I don't think it's ideology. I don't think they are purposefully doing this because you know much social justice more morality and shit but i think they're doing it because they they can't be fucked you know fixing their problems they can't be fucked fixing the things that you know the community complains about like there was a bug in the witch in the hundred night that would uh what well, i i think either brick the console or something or crash the game and brick the console you can't finish the game and the ps4 re-release still has that bug Jesus. they didn't patch it at all the oh, bug God. is still there, and it's on PS4 now. And the bug is still there; it still exists, and it's 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 no, it's never going to be fixed. And wow. what I found out about this was, I was talking to one of the uh, community managers, one of the persons who's higher is a bit higher up, and he says, mm-hmm. "Oh, it's because we don't program the game. Uh, we send it, we send everything to Japan, and they program it themselves." And there's and Wait, then I what? just think, what? they have no programmers at this America. They have zero what? programmers there. They what send they? Do their work and then they send it back to NIS in Japan, uh, Nipponichi, to do the programming for them. That's why everything takes fucking forever. That's why there's oh. so many bugs. That's why everything is fucked up. That's why whenever you tell them to fix something, they won't fix it because they say, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to NIS. And it's like, well, you know, we don't fucking care. It's the Western product. Uh, the the commu- product does the strong. community have an uh, actually take the effort on fixing it though? I, I mean, it's a patch. It's like there's a um, uh, on PC, patch? yes. On consoles, no. You can't patch consoles. Uh, oh, yeah. Even yeah, if the PS3 is hacked, you can't fucking patch the game. Be- yeah, because there's only and- official patches. Yeah. Yeah, no, but some. Uh, this is the stupid thing. Somebody figured out how to fix the bug in Witch in 100 Night to finish the game. They told Nis America this. They said, I know how to fix the bug. And w- guess what? No, they didn't respond. They said, oh, not our problem. What? So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, Jesus. Yeah, so before, they, yeah. They're very dis... They're very dismissive of everything critical of them. You, you have people bringing up their past uh, behavior and how they introduce bugs, how their localization was a mess, how they have so many issues with the. There's, there's like a, there's like a list of it going around, continually being added to it, and 
they will ignore it. They will say, oh, but that was back then. We we changed now. We changed now. But they're still doing, they're still carrying on the same How practice now. <sighs> How do they get work? How do they get contracts? Um, I think they get contracts. I, but, no, no, no. The, qu the question is, what's fast. the purpose? What's the purpose of this America in the first place? If they're not going to do all of those things? Like, no, but they... that's the thing. They, they lost. Okay. Do, do you know why ID Factory International exists? Because... Um. Uh, part the Idea Factory was used to be part of NIS in Japan. They broke off because mm -hmm. they were unhappy. They what NIS in Japan did, and NIS is just as bad as NISA. They would, in order to prevent the higher, uh, the the long time employees and to pay them more, they would fire them and rehire them as new employees oh. in order to prevent paying them extra money. So they, they, those people that used to be part of NIS, they broke off. And oh, they, wait, 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 wait. What? what they there, there was a game. I, I forgot. There was a game, basically. Uh, I saw someone's Twitter of a, a developer of a game whose localization process... Uh, she's basically regretting that the localization process has go to this. She just tweeted out on Twitter. I forgot what game that is. Uh, uh, that was uh, Yee's 8. And that was oh, yeah, Christine, yeah. Uh, Yee's 8. Yeah. 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 She was from, she's from Exceed. And Exceed has... And the problem with uh, Yee's 8 was... XC took years and years and years of dedication to build up the Yee series in the West. And now Nis America got Yee's 8. And I think the only reason they got it was they're able to produce a PC port. They're able to put in do audio and they're able to do the localization very fast. And, oh. and you will, you're going to expect uh, mistakes and bugs and memes and a whole bunch of other why, shit. Why, why, uh, why Exceed, can't they both do they're, that? Exceed are very slow. Exceed are very slow when localizing games. They take forever. But the quality of the localization is... To be honest, it's quite poor in my eyes, but it's higher quality than Nis America, and uh, and they lost Yee's eight to um, Nis America. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be lots of risk to basically explode that. Yeah, okay. but but they got a but there's a PC port and do audio, which Exceed for some reason cannot get. Yeah. Um, uh, what what? That's, that is just, uh... I think that I I honestly think Exceed is being shafted by their own by their own uh, Japanese subsidiaries. Mm -hmm. I think they are purposefully being shafted because every uh, Exceed release is like dub only, dub only. And these are like, Earth Defense Force 4.1 on PS4, dub only. On PC, do audio. Senon uh, Kagura is the exception. Like um, the Yi series in, mm -hmm. in like on consoles, uh, dub only. In like um, on PC, still dub only. And, like, and a whole bunch of other things. It's 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 weird. Yeah, that's one of the things I don't like about the the. Uh, um, I forget the name of the company that's behind Persona. What's the name of that company? Uh, Atlas. 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 Yeah, Atlas, a lot yeah. of like they. Yeah, I hate them as well. They they um. Well, I don't know about hating it, but if they they always include dub. And no, they, no, they were very. They were adamantly dub only, and I think I remember that. Don't quote me on this, but I remember there was like this post, either on the forum or on like Neo Neofag, and someone asked. You know why don't you just include do audio? Like we want do audio, and they were like, "Oh, we put effort into our dubs. Therefore, it's dub. Therefore, you have to, you know, accept it because we put effort oh. into it." And, and, and yeah. no, they, it's just dismissive of it. And and yeah. what happens with Atlas is the same. What happens with NIST? They surround themselves with fanboys that would defend it to the death. That you, you want do audio? How? Why do you want do audio? They put effort into quality. Well, you know, you're defending yourself with fanboys. And the funny thing is, Atlas can. Localized games with do audio, like um, Odin's yes, thing yeah. was do audio. Mm -hmm. um, Caligula is coming out; it's going to be Japanese only. Uh, Dungeon Travelers Two was Japanese only, so they can produce game. They can localize games with Japanese only audio. However, for some strange reason, when it comes to their first party games, dub only. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I've noticed I've that no too. It, it, it irritates me because I um one of my favorite games. Uh, that they've produced, um, and I, I like, I don't hate the Persona series, but I've never been able to finish one of the games. But um, I do. I hate it. I, I fucking hate it. <laughs> That's fine. I, it, it's, it, it's not great in my opinion. There's a lot of people that like it. I don't think it's great. But um, the dance game isn't bad. I've played that. I can get into that. The um, dance game was horrible. That was an abomination. Who the yeah, fuck I thought of that? It. It was a great idea. <laughs> I didn't mind it, but uh, I the, did. Uh, one of the games that they made that irritated me because they like the voice acting was super inconsistent um, was Catherine. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Still to this yeah. day, I, I genuinely like that game. I genuinely like it. Oh, oh me too. But I, I yeah, yeah. Catherine is, is a... played undubbed. Yeah. Well, the, that's the issue because I've heard it undubbed and I was like, 
this is so much better than the dub. And it was just like, why? Like, yeah. why didn't they have dual audio for this? Like, like, because the thing is, too, the um, I forgot. I'd have to look up the name of the actor that um, played the protagonist in it. Um, yeah, I'm blanking on the name, but um, he wasn't bad. But <laughs> most of the other characters, and there was a couple other characters that weren't bad. But the um, the the, the bartender. The thing- the female, uh, the main characters, uh, the female character, Catherine and K, Catherine and no, C. No, uh, Catherine with a C was bad. Um, okay. Catherine with a K wasn't very good either. But um, the the main antagonist in that, um, I forget the name of the bartender, Tom, I think it was. Um, he was bad, mm-hmm. and it, it was just like you have a, a slew of characters that are decently voice acted and then a slew that are badly voice acted and mm-hmm. no, each... the the entire thing was sh- the entire thing was shit i i i, can't, I couldn't play it dubbed i watched my uh friend short fat otaku play it just for fun I mean, uh dubbed fun. however i make fun of it i i absolutely hate it i can't stand the dub it's it was horrible yeah um yeah but, i can i can understand they, it that, that's that's all their dubs yeah, I, I can that, understand. That's all their dubs. All their dubs were bad. So all their dubs were bad, but they defended, saying, "Oh, we put effort into it." And uh, look at Persona bigger. Five. It's got um, memes and shit, and uh, pronounce. They can't even pronounce the names properly. Yeah, high quality. Really? Mate. Oh, God, really? It's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happened. That's why. That's why the game was delayed because I think Atlas Japan f- found out about it. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing? I, I, I just realized this. It was actually uh, it was Troy Baker that voiced Vincent in oh, Catherine. I thought that, that, he was pretty that, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, that explains but, it. But but but, but okay. okay. Catherine with a C, who I thought was terrible, was voice acted by Laura Bailey. What? Yeah, she's a hack. What okay. happened? What? What? Happened? No, 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 no. That that that, that can't be real. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I even even it, it, even but I listened. This, even I listened to it. Uh, no, this it's... is what happens when you let companies dub games. They it, it just turns out horrible. I don't know why they don't provide the audio. I'm I've I've anymore. heard Laura Bailey before, and she is not completely awful. She, she's she's so... Li- she's Liara she's from awful. Mass Effect, right? She's awful. Let's be honest. She's awful. Mm, uh, let me double check that. No, she's Rizzi Kiwakawa from Persona Four. That's yes, she, she was awful in Persona Four. Yeah, like, she was bad. And she was bad there too. No, uh, wait, okay, Rise. I think Rise was um was somewhat popular in Japan. I forgot their name. Oh, she did uh, the dub for K for K. <laughs> who? Who? Uh, who? Uh, forget it. Oh, okay, she's she's, was she's done like a billion anime. different anime. She's done like so much fucking anime. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, well. Yeah. And she she shit in all of them because well I don't know why. She maybe Hold she kind of yeah, you you, you thought that dubs are bad. She's been in Final yeah, I, dubs, I, I stand by that because okay, have you have you tried watching a, something Western dubbed in Japanese? It sounds fucking horrible. Western yeah, dubs. I stand by dubs are bad because dubs are bad in general. They, they, yeah, yeah, just give subtitles. What's so difficult? It's cheaper. Yeah, it's cheap. It's legitimately cheaper. God, cheaper and. Oh uh, God! She's been so, like a so, billion yeah. fucking video games. I'm trying. I know her from something other than. Um... Oh yeah, she works for Telltale. She has like an ongoing contract for Telltale. That's how I remember her name. Okay. Oh, Telltale. Yeah, shit. she's not. She's not uh-huh. very good. Yeah, she's not very good. <laughs> See, told you. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, uh, guys, guys. So I think uh, we have yeah, gone a little sorry. bit, a little bit long here. So I'm just gonna add this one. I'm gonna share you a link. Okay, I think I shared the link. I want you guys to open it, and uh, okay. I, I don't know what I want your thoughts on this. Oh yeah, I saw that. Uh, fucking Sargon tweeted this out earlier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so for this for the stream, I'm gonna show you. Uh, wait a second. Is that the actual picture? Oh yeah, that yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw Sargon tweet this out. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I, like I, I just so went. <laughs> What in the name of? That <laughs> they're pretty much blurring the entire thing. So yeah, yeah. For Why those are you blurring of you... it, I want to see what the porn was. I want to see if uh, I no... recognize anyone. <laughs> okay. Probably would, yeah. So so for those of you who can't see it, porn. It's it's an article from the Daily Mail. Porn yeah. really is bad for you. Lonely Japanese man who amassed a six-ton pile of dirty magazines died when it collapsed on top of him. 
<laughs> and his body wasn't found for six months. <laughs> like, well, it's, I, oh well, my god! Worry, man, uh, I mean, none of us have to worry. Most of all my dojins are digital. It's on my hard drive. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I know. But, guys, guys, guys are traditional. <laughs> he, he's fifty Next years old. Uh, fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, God. It's all digital now. Who cares? Yeah, nobody, nobody cares. I mean, but, uh, my hard drives yeah. are gonna come out to no. me anytime soon. Well, well, maybe, maybe when when a lightning strikes happen and it's like, so basically, if if lightning happens and you were like watching hentai and they're gonna put that correlation in there, maybe that. <laughs> oh, you know, a uh, man died by watching hentai after hard drive struck. You know, after lightning <laughs> struck hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> it has to get through the roof and everything else. It just got... that was a serious power surge then. Oh, I, I just I just want to ask I just want to ask you guys. Uh, have you guys this the room that has been burned in here was like oh my god like so dirty. And the thing is, it wasn't him like watching uh reading the I was reading the entire thing. It wasn't him reading the porn. It was him taking out the trash and he put the entire trash on his house. So he didn't even want it in there. I think. The, the, that's yeah, so, it, well. it's it's kind of ironic. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really weird. Well, I'm like trying to understand functionally how this exactly happened. Yeah, but it, it apparently somehow it like came down on top of him and actually crushed him. How, how is that even? Isn't like, it like a holder thing where it's like a giant stack and he just puts something on top and it's like oh shit, and it just but it's like an avalanche. Like, if you look at it, it, it like came out of this one corner from what it seems. Because it all yeah. splashes out from there. So maybe he had it stacked up and it was like built back. So it was like a pile in, in built into a corner. And then it all fell forward and it collapsed completely on top of him. And apparently it was heavy enough to crush him and Jesus. kill him. Yeah. I I, well, was it, I thought well, it was like a comfortable with a bookcase or something like that. Like like there's this bookcase. Oh and... no no, there's a bookcase. There is some stuff in there, but I think he's like he has too much, and it just he, he, there's no room in a bookcase. But this is a lesson: old media will kill you. <laughs> you media. Yeah, that's a, dude. Read the comment section of this. The comment section is fucking merciless. When oh, they really? found him, he was stiff as a board. Uh, guess he didn't. <laughs> guess he didn't have an internet connection. No happy ending to this story. <laughs> Jesus Man, Christ! For the internet. <laughs> he oh did the right thing. He, he, there's a comment. One of the top rated comments. He did the right thing. Real women are just too much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> there is a comment. I found it. Have they oh, recovered God. his body yet, or are they still going through the magazines? <laughs> at least he died. At least he died doing something he loved. <laughs> his head. <laughs> oh my God. Uh. Oh, there's, dude, there's a ton of people also idea. saying, like, why doesn't he have it digital? It's like, it's because he's yeah. 50. He, he's yeah. 50 His years guilt old. must have weighed heavily on him. Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> wow, yeah, that man. That... Although, yeah. To, to be yeah. fair, though, to be fair, if, if I really want to die, if there's one way, I think this is preferable. <laughs> this no, I don't think so. Nah, it's nah, pretty it's pretty interesting, bad. but it won't be a preferable way to die. <laughs> nah, nah. Okay, just no, but, just but 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 seriously, uh, everybody watching this, uh, stop using old media. Use new media. It's it's much more beneficial for you. It's safe. You're not gonna get hurt. Um, no one's gonna come after you. I I kind of doubt that anyone listening to this is like over the age of like thirty five. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's like a handful of people uh, that are you are, saying you're thirty five? No. I'm 26. Uh, I was going to say, if you're 35, why are you hanging out with children? <laughs> How old are you? I know Appa's young. Uh-huh. Uh, I think I'm older than Appa, but I, I think I'm younger than you. Wait, wait. You, you can't mention specific, like you forget your date or something? No, I just don't want to mention it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want to be anonymous on the internet. F fuck everybody. All right. Okay, fine. <laughs> Your choice. Okay, so I think that's a very good message. A uh, good ending message for Portal of these. So thank you guys so much for hanging out this stream. It's been crazy. It's been insane. And we're not just talking about the BBC. We went through a lot of things, localization and everything like that. Uh, thank you so much, Louis and Portable Dees for hanging out. It's been crazy, guys. So uh, I think that's going to end the stream. So thank you, guys. So... Uh, take care. Yep, thank you.